evening party people. My name is Cameron and I'm joined by the wonderful and beautiful Brad or more than awesome. Who is indeed more than awesome. More than awesome for an, a variety of reasons. One such is uh, being able to co-star here this evening as we explore these two beautiful bottles of liquor. What is it is it the color of the bottle or is it the what lies within the bottle that or is really it both Perhaps. Mm. So as you can probably see by the cute little stamp on the board and the two bottles that lie before you, we're exploring the cocktails and libations that are made with chartreuse today. Chartreuse is actually kind of interesting because it's popped up a lot in the cocktail world mm. recently. I mean, it's been known to be a very good ingredient in cocktails for a, like a number of years now. But more recently, the Carthusian monks who create this beautiful libation, both of them, and I think there's another one too that's like a special like... The SEP oh, yeah, version yeah. or something with it. And I think there's a bitters or something too. Beyond the scope of this episode, they usually denote their time to silence and prayer and internal reflection and everything that the monks and whatnot do. But everyone's like always knocking on the doors and being like, see, do you have those bottles of the sweet, sweet like ichor that we love so much? And they're like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, and it got so damn popular, apparently, that they were like, whoa, hold on, hold on. We're here. Mm -hmm reflection and we're here for right. like this this pursuit of a higher state of being um and this is kind of alcohol can be a little distracting so i believe what has happened and i'm not a historian in any context so if i'm pulling this out of thin air let it be that way. Talk to the actual cocktail historians, the people who are actually doing it. Go the to research. France and talk to the monks. Go to France yeah. and talk to the monks. They will they at the very least they might like sign back to you because right. there's, there's a vow of silence. Nobody will ever know. Um, but so they're limiting the supply of it now. So it's been a little more difficult to get over the last, I guess, year or so when I first saw it like pop up in the headlines and stuff. So evidently, somebody out there happened yeah. to have a couple of bottles yeah. on standby. Just collecting dust on a shelf somewhere, yeah. Just uh, not there's there was only one last word, and that was the last word. Mm. As opposed to many other words beforehand. Yeah. What was the first word? A different cocktail entirely. A riff on the last word. No. Oh. The, the, the last came before the first, I think, or Did maybe not. Oh, that's uh. okay. Anna's over in the background, also oh, adding her yeah. literary yeah. expertise to the equation. Oh yeah, my expertise. Version. Indeed, indeed. Everyone's got their perspective and different mm. angles and stuff. What I love about like this stuff, like right, like is uh, like the monks stopped making it like for for like you and me mm -hmm. like, because. Like, it's got 130 herbs and plants and nobody knows what they are. Oh, yeah. And they had to fly, like, out of their monasteries Ooh. to go and get it, so... Indeed. It's interesting to think of all those different botanicals and stuff. I just remembered that one of the other books that I have, uh, this drunken botanist one over here, does mention a number of the certain spices that might be in chartreuse as well. Right. Such I don't as. know. Such as, I think saffron maybe one of them, sure. allegedly. Yeah. Or I might be mixing it up with something else. I wonder if I go back real quickly into the glossary C. If char true char cashew okay. chapman charanda mm -hmm. charbe char to chateau chartreuse oh a number of pages i see 138 140 148 oh, there's so many different pages let's see one i'll do 138 140 and 148 and we'll see what yeah. those ones are because one lately like the, the big thing like back home for us is like you've been going around and uh what do you replace like chartreuse with and it's because you know Mm -hmm. It's 30 pages in a book that might talk about a plant that's in it. Indeed. Uh, nobody knows, and every time I hear a suggestion of something to replace it with, it's always terrible. Yeah. Uh, so at least one page says there is... Oh, wait, I was on the wrong page. It's this one. It has aloe in it, like the aloe vera or otherwise. Which is green, so that makes sense. Which is green. Yeah. It does correspond yeah. to that. It's possible that angelica, an herb known as api apioxia, the carrot family, angelica arc... Cangelica. Probably those green carrots, got it. Indeed, we have on page 148 is a botanical that eludes me currently, but calamus, aka the sweet flag, Ooh. as well as a number of other things. And we could go, we could flip through the entire book, but again, beyond the for, for your reference, the drunken botanist. Mm. It's got all the it's got all the botanical stuff in it. I'm not putting you in the bucket. I'm just putting that in here. The bucket's not going to eat a book today. The bucket, hopefully Taylor will not have to ingest a book this evening. Uh, it would be sad for the book, um, but an honor for the bucket, yeah. as yeah, usual. Very true. So to start things off around here, I've never, I mean, uh, to my to my recollection, I've never had chartreuse yeah. before. I don't think I've ever had it in a drink. I've certainly never sipped it neat before. And the only, like, in, like the only exposure that I've had to it was very briefly, just mm -hmm. to tease things for myself, to open the bottle and give it a little bit of a smell. Um, mm -hmm. We're gonna we're gonna try it for real this time around. Yeah. And normally, like, you don't do that with like random like alcohols. Like, I'm just gonna try it neat first, and like then do, do the cocktails mm -hmm. that make them real cool. And well, I can feel like it's a little disingenuous. 
disingenuous sometimes because right. for something that has you know a number of botanicals in it, I feel like you go into that thinking like I'm going to be able to pick out all the little flavors, and right? Stuff, all the different all botanicals. All 170. Oh, I'm going to name them. We're going to write them on the board. Of them. And then you're like, well, I'm only getting one main thing, or, right. or maybe maybe a couple. Like it's definitely be. I feel like that's that's like a task for people who have palettes that they know inside and out. They've got fine control over every single like area of the olfactory and taste and mouth and whatever stuff. So spooky. Yeah. And after like years of like, you know, drinking wine, like, or, you know, uh, gin or spirits, like, there. right. Like where you can actually say, well, there's notes of cinnamon and mm -hmm. like wood, like stone uh, fruits and tobacco and otherwise. I'm now to the point where like, I can tell the tobacco, mm -hmm. um, I can tell when a wine tastes like sour cheese, mm -hmm. um, but like in a good way, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. And I feel like I remember once upon a time I took a wine class, mm -hmm. and uh, I think one of the notes that there's a word for it is like O of cat urine. Right. I don't know what the <laughs> word is, but I know that he's like, there's a one word on your sheet because they gave us a worksheet, right. and this is like. Mm -hmm urine right you will probably not have to mark it off in this course right. but you may find it in your travels one day that it, it is like a you know because like gasoline was also on there yeah. as a flavor or the tobacco or rubber and we're all on there they're all flavors that you can get maybe flavors inside of chartreuse is this like foreshadowing i mean like, is it a little tobacco-y maybe the, maybe a little gasoline -y. maybe a little bit like, of gasoline a little piquant of urine, urine. Oh, to cat urine. Oh, to cat shows urine. Me the normal urine pH for dogs and cats is six to seven point five. And now you know, yeah. six to seven point five is the natural right. acidity level or base level for your urine All or the dogs and the yeah. cats. If you're a dog or a cat, dog or yeah. a cat. If you're a person, it might be different. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder. In any case, Brad, would you mind grabbing for us a couple of glasses yeah. over there, and we'll give these things a little bit of a pour, and I will update accordingly what we have yeah. in store for us, which is our first recipe, technically. Yeah. It's Chartres. I think for classy little sippies, I'm gonna find the classiest little drink uh, that I can. Chartres UZ. I had to remind myself at least three yeah. times of how to spell that word before the stream. And Chartres UZ. Chartres UZ. Yeah. The S yeah. is looking a little, yeah. a little, a little wonky. Yeah. You know what? It's it's all right. It'll be okay. Yeah. All right. So. I have been told from prior research right. that apparently the yellow one, the, oh, what is it? The liqueur fabrique par le Paris, Ooh. Chartreux, product of France, diffusion. There's a word for this one as opposed to the, wait a minute. One is like, nope, I don't see it on the bottom mm. at all. Well, one is yellow yeah. and one is green. The yellow one can also be known as yellow chartreuse and the green one is green chartreuse. I think they also have like special special names for them as I well. I just call them yellow and green. That's like true. when I go out to bars. Just, just like call them how you see it's them. It's like, I want a last word, like, or I want a whatever. Like, do you have any green? And they're like, right. no, we, we've not had green for months. Leave us alone, red. Right. Like, right. Yeah. yeah. And so the yellow one is supposedly a little bit more sweeter than the green one. Mm. And they're both made using a, a collection of a hundred and... Actually, let's... Do they tell you on the back? Shall we read the back of the bottle before we oh, jump in? Yeah. Chartreuse is made only by Carthusian monks of La Grande Chartreuse near Grenoble, France. Chartreuse today is still made from 130 alpine herbs according to an ancient 1605 formula. The secret method of preparation is shared by three Carthusian brothers and is protected by vows of silence. Chartreuse is sold in America as a green or yellow liqueur, the latter being sweeter and milder. Each type is also available in a rare VEP, the only liqueur to have a color named after it. Chartreuse is also famous for a flavor and fragrance totally unexpected, remarkably beguiling, unique in all the world. Chartreuse is most popular mixed with tonic or soda in a tall glass with ice, accented by a slice of lemon or lime, but can also be enjoyed on the rocks. I have is it the same thing on the other bottle? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's uncanny. That it's, well, I guess they put it in yeah. there. It can be sold as either yeah. yellow or green, so it doesn't matter what bottle they print them on, uh, so long as they get the colors in right. I'm super excited like when you try like the yellow because uh, there is a bar in Chicago mm -hmm. called Aviary like, mm -hmm. and they have a chartreuse like cellar like down mm -hmm. under the bar. But they just have a bunch of chartreuse down like, there? Like old chartreuse, oh, they have wow. the VDP. Uh, I, I saw it on their after drinks menu mm -hmm. and it was like it's two hundred dollars. I was like, I don't, I don't know. For like, for like for, a single for, sip of it. For a little, like, about as much of a sip as we'll have, oh like of goodness. these. Wow. Uh, but they had one that was uh, like twenty eight bucks an ounce. Uh, oh my goodness! Wow. So I was like, yeah, like we'll do that. And then like, we do an ounce and a half pour, so it's like forty bucks. I'm like whatever. Like I'm here. I'm never gonna you have the opportunity to. Yeah. Uh, they came out and apologized and said, like. This is like the last bottle we have. And there's not enough to give you oh, like the no. pork, so you can have it for free. Oh my gosh! 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a oh, happy they couldn't, story. They couldn't fill the yeah. whole thing up for you. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, yeah. but yeah. I'm gonna have to give you a drink. Like, it's a good news, bad news situation. I'm sorry about that, but also very happy about that. And then, like, they brought the bottles. Like, can I take the bottle home since I kicked it? They're like, no. Like, oh my god, what are they gonna do with the bottles? They have to destroy them because of counterfeiting. Oh, because people counterfeit the chartreuse. Like, I love how like now chartreuse is getting to that level of the world where like people are afraid where it is going to be yeah. counterfeit oh, yeah. and all that. I mean, like, I I feel like I remember watching a movie once upon a time and it might have been during the wine course right. where it was like this guy was like, his thing was like counterfeiting wines and stuff. Don't remember what the movie was called, but I remember it being a very interesting watch. Yeah. And now that apparently it's a thing with spirits and stuff. Yeah, yeah, now you see chartreuse. These could be fake. These could be. Yeah, this could just be like uh, Kool-Aid. I mean, and... I mean, to my knowledge, I'm under the impression that they are real because I was told yeah. by this individual yeah, yeah, that it was yeah, real yeah. and he was told by somebody else we bought yeah, them from that yeah. they're going to be real. So if there is some weird like collusion happening here with the chartreuse, then um, it goes far beyond just the mm. small little pockets that we have here. It runs a lot deeper mm. than that. So we'll pour out. I like your bold choice of starting here. with uh, with green. The green one. Yeah. I I feel like I want to jump right into whatever right. The, the most the most potent one yeah. is going to be. This is the deep end because like I know like folks who don't really do like liquor. Like the green stuff. like at all. Yeah. Anything. Uh, Interesting. So what are we what are we smelling so far? Oh, it's kind of. It's like almost a little, I, I want to say it's almost licorice -y, but it's not as potent as licorice. Yeah, it's not like super anise. Like I get- A um, little anise, that's yeah. a better- You know the, um, like when you go to like a like a mid-tier Italian restaurant and they mm -hmm. give you the oil that has a bunch of like stuff herbs in it. it? Yeah, this is the stuff. This right? is the stuff This is the reduced the stuff. That's, that's just... true, that's true. And I'm also getting almost like kind of citrusy notes too. Things that I can't like, it's almost, to me it's almost like Specifically dentist office -y. Yes. Like there's a little, there's an air of mint there that is in the distance, but it's also a, almost a little metallic as well. Like as you do like your, your like Fernet and like things like that, that mm -hmm. kind of mentholated like energy is oh, there. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah. Dentist office is a, a good call. Taking that. And it's got a, such a nice color too. Green chartreuse. Cheers. Oh, so clean. Wait, I was supposed to drink that. Let's check. Whoa. Would you like to, hello and welcome. Woo! Yeah. That is Ooh. fiery. Anna appears <laughs> to agree. Very oh, fiery. That taste. Woo! Oh, that burned my mouth. That is, uh, when you said Anna's before, yeah. that's like the first thing that I get. Yeah. It's very much in my face. Yeah. I think when I was smelling this the other day, I was like, it's almost a little like, it's almost a little absent thing. Yeah. And maybe I'm being like thrown off by by the color, by the color yeah, there. It tastes like licorice. Yeah. yeah. I agree with that. Alcoholic. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. Which is bad. Yeah. I'm also getting like there's a little bit of like a like a there's obviously a bitterness to it. Yeah. And it's 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 potent. It's a it's potent hot. bitterness. It's a hot. It's, it's a hot liqueur yeah, for it sure. Is. And it it's is almost electric. a little savory in a way. Just kind of interesting. I feel like I now get the tasting note on the back where it's like oh when you enjoy this like. Uh, like put an ice cube in there, mm -hmm. or maybe like a Kinda little. Kind of cool you down a little bit. Like a little bit of like tonic or soda. Yeah, um, and maybe it's because of that like kind of like hotter note to it. But I'm even getting like it's like like pepper in general, like right. either like a not not quite like a like a spicy type mm -hmm. pepper, but almost like a almost jalapeno ish. Right. Maybe just a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And weird, like not the jalapeno that's like the grassy jalapeno, but like mm -hmm. the other it's side more like of the it. The very the other kind of almost sweeter because mm -hmm. it is peppers are fruits yeah. after all. Got those sugars in them. That is interesting. It also sticks with you for forever. It does. It's hanging around. <laughs> yeah, it's, but not, it's, it's not completely, yeah. it's not unpleasant. Yeah, no, it's it's delicious. Mm -hmm. It's also not going anywhere. I'm gonna eat candy and make it. Yeah, that is very much like, I feel like I've had like, licorice candies before. Right. Not specifically licorice, but this is more complex than that. Almost, it's, it's like lemon zesty or a little like lime zesty. Mm -hmm. It's giving me a lot of those, those very like floral and the grassy vibes, which, which is, is like, cool. Which is wild, like, like it's such a versatile like spirit to use mm -hmm. in other cocktails because mm -hmm. like the the licorice like will go away, right? Like yeah. it'll get hidden. Um, it'll try to like balance out with whatever else is going on in there. Yeah. We are looking for the thing that will replace green. Um, there's a thing called Genepi, like that is mm -hmm. very yeah. very 
like absinthe forward, mm -hmm. um, but also has that kind of like vegetal finish. Oh, very cool. Um, but it's it's even more licorice-y than this is. Oh, wow, okay, um, okay. And that was Genepi, right? Yeah. I think I remember adding that into my, as I, I categorize and search for spirits and stuff. It's, it's, another, it's another spirit out there. It's cool. That's nice. And even, honestly, I will say, all things considered, it does have a slight sweetness to it. It is so kind of approachable. It is very hot, though. It's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I like rye whiskey. Mm -hmm. I think so. This is great. You say rye whiskey, and my mind went to spice. And yeah. when I went to spice, I thought of pepper, like right. black pepper, yep. peppercorn. And I'm getting those, like, kind of peppercorn notes mm -hmm. now, which are cool. Mm -hmm. That's sort of like, kind of like, um, um, freshly mm -hmm. cracked pepper spice. And I don't think anything I've, I've had in a liqueur before. All I can think about is the dentist's office now. Cause... Right? <laughs> and of course, there's that mint note in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, love the green. Uh, I don't use it a lot because, mm -hmm. like, before tonight, I didn't know many, like, green cocktails. Yeah, I think um, most notably, the you know, the green chartreuse is used in, like, a last word. Right. It's like that, that's, like, the staple of yeah, your, yeah. your green chartreuse ones. Or if you don't want to have, like, uh, you know, a gin drink, you have, like, a final word or the ultimate palabra. That's or, true. Like... A bunch of different variations. So that, that whole, like, era of, like, one drink evolving into another, mm -hmm. into another. I was doing a little bit of research earlier today, and I think I found that one of the drinks that I'd cataloged was, like, oh, yes, it is... It's like there's families out there. There's like right. the last word family, the Negroni family, the like kind of like um um there's like I think the old pal and oh, yeah. the Negroni are like they're not the same family because you swap out the dry vermouth for yeah. the sweet vermouth, so it puts it on different sides of like the yeah. family tree. But they're cousins. Yeah, like, they're, exactly. They, they see I, each other. I had this moment where I was like, what if you like mapped out the whole like cocktail Ooh. family tree? And I feel like somebody out there has done it. I'm sure. They had to. There's a book. There's gotta be a book yeah. on it. The Taylor's probably got a book. Cocktails. Absolutely. All right, so green. So green chartreuse, so far, it's a spicy. Yeah. It's peppercorny. Mm -hmm. It's vegetal. It's a little citrusy. Mm -hmm. It's licorice or an mm -hmm. anise. 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 Yeah. Uh, um, and that's what? That's like five different things. Yeah. So uh, apparently we're missing a lot of the there's building. There's heat in it. There's heat. Maybe yeah. a little like cinnamon happening it's, there. Yeah. There's, uh, there's aloe, I've heard. Aloe. Yeah. Oh, there's aloe yeah. or yeah. angelica yeah. roots. Yeah. Yeah. Don't even know that. I feel like so many of the botanicals are like, I bet if they listed the whole thing in any way, mm. a lot of them maybe, I wonder if they're even like specific genuses oh, that I'm are sure. specifically found yeah. in like the, the Chartreuse Mountains. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like French basil as opposed mm -hmm. to like as opposed to American like, basil that you can basil. get here, yeah. Or like your chocolate mint versus like your spearmint or your peppermint or your mint mint or your other Chartreuse right, right. mint maybe. Yeah, the Yellow monk mint. mint. Green yeah. mint, the monk mint. Yeah, yeah. Monk fruit, no monk Ooh, fruit notes no, in there. Maybe. Not to me at least, maybe. maybe. If you got some monk fruit, and like yeah. you could eat a bite and then mm -hmm. take a drink and see if they uh, complement each other. Maybe there's like there's like there's a um, there's a um, I don't remember what the word is, but it's like a monk's solution or monk's elixir out oh, there, and yeah. it's made using particular a particular collection of ingredients, which is a very vague <laughs> yeah, way of saying yeah. I don't know what's in it. Yeah, but I know it's a thing. Yeah, I have a tincture. Like I, it might have yeah. that tincture might have been the yeah. word, a monk's tincture. Yeah, it's probably one of these books somewhere. Mm. Eventually, if we mm. find it. Yeah. Maybe there'll be a whole episode of monks. Ooh. Because now... Now you have the monk juice. We have, we yeah. have monk juice. Yeah. This is essentially yeah. colored monk juice. Yeah. yeah, You just get a little bit of mead. Um, Ooh, indeed, indeed. Gravy off a of spit, and then we're good to go. So next, I think it's time to try that. I think it's, I think, yes. I think the it's yellow, absolutely right. The yellow vermouth. The yellow yeah. chartreuse. The yellow vermouth. The, the sweeter, milder, younger sibling mm. of the green chartreuse. Mm -hmm. Now, right now, what we're doing is we're just kind of drinking them straight. There's no cooling or anything, and there's no um, anything like that. Just trying to get as many notes as we possibly can there. I think it was a little disproportionate eh. if I pours there. Eh. I think we'll be, be fine. Right. We got yeah. plenty of stuff for us. We'll make it up through the night. Indeed, indeed. So this one, similar vibes. Yeah. Uh, not not as like it's like subtle. peppery or not as yeah. like anise for it as the other one. A little bit. It, is, it smells a little sweet. Yeah, I can get like I can get like honey notes off of it. Yeah, I mean especially like going from green. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm. Ooh. I want to jump straight into this one. This is this yeah. smells lovely. Oh yeah. So we were talking last night. Um mm. and like to me, like this is sweet, not in a 
sugary way, but mm -hmm. like it's in kind of like a syrupy, like fruity texture way. This is almost this is almost like like sipping like a nicely like uh, like like I feel like mm -hmm. and I've never experienced oh, this myself, mm -hmm. but olive oils mm -hmm. yes. have a bunch of different like people flavor their olive oils and they have different notes and stuff. This is almost like the syrupy olive oil. Oh, that's different. It's yellow. Yeah. It's milder, it's sweeter, a mm -hmm. little less forward on the spicier hot notes. Definitely less hot yeah, than yeah, the first yeah. one. What are your thoughts? The official anatase test. This feels like a, a summertime drink for me. Uh, right? Yeah. You get your uh, ice cube, catch, a little yellow neat. Yeah, catch me yeah. with this, like sipping sipping from the yeah. from the bottle itself. I put the chartreuse bottle in the freezer and I just like go from yeah. there. In the summertime. So it's lighter. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. It didn't immediately burn my lips. That's, that's yeah. an improvement, I think. I think it's an after burn. Do you versus mean? like the first right. one was an immediate burn. Oh, yeah. This one's mm -hmm. like an after burn. And I, and come to think of it, it was that burn coming from alcohol content. One is okay. Our yellow chartreuse is only 43% by volume, so only 86 proof, versus the other one is 55, so that's 110 yeah. proof. So the burn might be coming from that extra bit of alcohol yeah. in there as well, which would make sense. There is a not unnoticeable right. difference in alcohol content yeah. between these two. And you don't drink a lot of things that are like 55% like mm -hmm. meat and not notice like the bite. Yeah. Um, like this being like in the 40s and being very smooth and drinkable. Absolutely. Uh, like, is kind of my favorite and like a lot of cocktails like even with this being as mild as it is only uses a little bit of chartreuse right? mm -hmm. like these bottles go a long way yeah i feel like for the most part like it's not like it's not base spirit in the sense that you're going to go through like ounce after ounce after ounce of the drinks mm -hmm. that you're making it's like it's either used to sweeten or it's it's a it's a more like evenly mm -hmm. split base right where you don't use as much of the liqueur in it which kind of makes sense like i feel like those more specialty liqueurs such as the chartreuse mm -hmm. in this case you're not gonna just throw a i mean ideally you wouldn't right. throw a bunch of it into a glass and just like take the whole thing down as if it was nothing you kind of try to savor mm -hmm. it a little bit like like we do uh, like with these cute little glasses little cordial glasses you put tasting. them in you put them in tiny glasses because you feel bad just pounding one I did feel a little, I felt a little piece of myself, mm -hmm. like, sink down, like, a little piece of the wallet, just be like, you just, you drank something so... Yeah. You just had, uh, 75 cents worth of yellow chartreuse. There we go. Yeah. One of the best 75 cents it's... I've ever swallowed, I guess. Yeah. I'll Probably, take that. Yeah, the problem is you have to buy, like, a thousand swallows at a time. It's true. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's fair. I mean, even when I was first, like, getting into cocktails and stuff, I was, like, almost shocked by the price of mm -hmm. some of the bottles that you find. I was like, there's no... <laughs> little college me being, like... <clears throat> There's no way I'm spending fifty dollars on a bottle right. of spirit. Like, what the heck? And then I realized, like, that same bottle is sitting even now, more than two or three years later. And I'm like, oh, I haven't gone through it yet because yeah, because it's so expensive. It's like, expensive. Yeah. You don't use it very often. Yeah, I mean, I bought these like because there was a shortage. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm never gonna find them. I had to go out and get some before everybody else got them. And took I them saw them out. at the store, and there were like three of each, and I should have bought like all oh six. Oh my goodness! Right? Like, well, then uh, you'd be you'd be the, the scalpers that are taking away from everybody. Yes, yeah. I don't want to be that. You person. were you were conservative. There. I want to share joy. Uh, and then I opened it, and I had a last word, uh, and then I had like an Alaska, mm -hmm. and then, like I haven't touched them since because I was like, well, I want to like finish this bottle and right, not right. have one in storage. Mm -hmm. uh, so then you just don't drink it. I like, it just kind of uh, sits there. Yeah. yeah. And so then I just go to the store and I buy like a bottle like beef eater or something like mm -hmm. gin and tonic and I'm, exactly. a, I'm a happy boy i feel like we always wind up going back to like our sort of like comfort drinks right and so a gin and tonic is very easy to make you can mm -hmm. sub it with your gins and stuff you can even sub out your tonics yeah. if you feel like getting a little more bougie with it yeah. I know me in particular, I just like, I like my Negronis. Mm -hmm. And to yeah. be fair, there's, I don't do a lot of swapping out with them. It's usually mm -hmm. always a uh, Carpana Antique Vermouth. Yeah. Campari is Campari. Yeah. And then the, the gin is basically just whatever I wind up having on hand. It's usually mm -hmm. just the cheaper stuff. Or yeah. I, I want to feel a little special today. This week was a little hectic yeah. week. So I, I had a little botanist Negroni the other Ooh. day. And it was, it was very, very nice. That's very classy. Very rewarding. Uh, yeah. Uh, Aaron loves Negronis. Like mm -hmm. the same thing. Like doesn't play with things much. Uh, these are fun bottles to like, swap out like your herbal thing like in a mm -hmm. drink with right like what i can imagine I mean, like, like taking like a negroni and instead yeah. of, let's say the bitter campari you yeah. put a little chartreuse in there yeah maybe. Maybe. or like maybe just like half campari and half yeah, yellow a or something there. yeah it'd be cool like bring something new in because that like you can almost start picking out like individual herbs that i've had before mm -hmm. like there there are things in a spice cabinet picking through like the mental spice cabinet that's what's there this? What's that? what's and this? this is just so unlike anything i've had before that i can't point out like, mm -hmm. any of the 170. yeah i'm definitely getting to a point now where i'm i'm eating certain foods and i'm like oh this is this is like a spice that i've had mm -hmm. before i don't know what that spice is but it's interesting now having that association between what what i just took a bite of is mm -hmm. like this is 
as a whole mm-hmm. new to me, but individually there are pieces of it that are oddly oddly familiar. It's really comforting, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And actually, I was looking at a I was a, um, a post this er, um, earlier today where they were so it's doing like cereal infusions of Ooh. stuff. I think it was like a punch drink type article. Okay. And they were saying how there's a cocktail now out there that uses like a cocoa puffs infusion. And one of the specific notes that they had there was like it's it's advantageous to have flavors like that mm-hmm. in your bar full of people who we were kids right. once upon a time. We had those like internal flavors and associations of those things that connect us to our childhood. And sometimes yeah. I'll have these associations like oh this reminds yeah. me of like the orthodontist or dentist. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. not a very pleasant experience. Right. But if I took a sip of something and I was like, Fruit Loops? Mm-hmm. I might be like taken back to a really nice time in my life and think like, oh, this is a mm-hmm. good cocktail. Maybe I don't know what else is going right, on. Right. Like, I got but Fruit Loops there. There is something there Pops, that's right. special. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so where is your head at on like what you like? Like I think they're so di- like so you wouldn't far. think they'd be different, but like they're yeah they're wild. It's like I I'm getting similar notes to both of them. Like mm-hmm. both of them are a little licorice, yeah. both and any so little both of them a little vegetal. One's yeah. a little obviously a little more sweet than the other, and there's like almost like this unspoken zesty citrus note right. of some. Some citrus, I don't know which mm-hmm. kind. Maybe let's just say it's bergamot in there. Right, Why sure. not something yeah. special? But they occupy different spaces. Yeah, in my mind and in my flavor memory. And I'd agree with that. I'm looking forward to being able to figure out like kind of what what works where mm-hmm. in the various different cocktails we have. Because it's weird because like I drink a lot more green than I do yellow, but mm-hmm. I like yellow better. Interesting. Uh, and I don't know if it's just that I like you know like last words and cocktails that have mm. green. And not many people know yellow cocktails. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I feel like even when trying to do the research for this episode, I, I found like I was trying to find like an even spread between like the yellow chartreuse and the right. green chartreuse drinks. And for the most part, like there's a lot of green out there. There's a not lot of green. Not as much yellow out there. And I think it's just probably the popularity of the last word and how it's evolved into a right. bunch of other drinks as well. Mm-hmm. And I guess that's just kind of like where it comes from. Also, <laughs> like, you know, higher ABV, like mm-hmm. a little boozier, uh, right, much more right. assertive, right? Absolutely. Like, uh, like the green will fight you. It will. Like the uh, the yellow is your best friend. It'll fight you either in a good way or yeah. or, or a bad way. Mm-hmm. Either yeah. fight you like just kind of knock you out for the yeah. evening and just like it's okay because you're unconscious type of thing. Right. Or or it'll stand in front of you in the battle and be like, I don't know. Metaphorically speaking, yeah. I'm tossing the chartreuse yeah. onto somebody right. as it means to defend myself. Yeah. And there goes the chartreuse, right. and there goes the individual walking away being like with your chartreuse with the chartreuse yeah. bottle. Yeah. Just threw it at them. Yeah. No broken. Just just yeah. just just a gift. Just yeah. a gift. Just a gift indeed. And so, mm-hmm. I think it's time to move on. I mean, do, actually, I gotta ask: Do you mm-hmm. do we want to try this with a little bit of with a little bit we of ice? Should. Yeah. I feel like there's yeah. there's, there's two completely yeah. different sides yeah. to tasting things with or without yeah. the ice. You know? Maybe like a splash of like soda or something. Yeah, Tonic? a little bit of soda yeah. water. I could do with yeah. that. Or tonic. Actually, ooh, ooh, do we want to try the yeah. chartreuse and tonic? Yeah, let's do that. Maybe a little ice in there yeah. too. We'll get all we'll get yeah. all the things that we want with. Yeah. With yeah. that. We'll go for that. So what I'll do now is I'll grab a couple of ice cubes. There are little cans of tonic Ooh. water down there. We'll crack one of those a little open. Tiny cans of tonic. Yeah. Oh, and we'll do a little, we'll do yeah. a little chilled chartreuse and tonic. Ooh. I don't know if that's a particular recipe, yeah. but you know what? The beautiful thing about cocktails is that you can serve them however you want to. Yeah. And tonic is a great mixer. Soda water is a great mixer. Right. Just put, some, put a little bit of water in there. It's a great mixer. That's how your coffee, your espressos and coffees become your Americanos. Yeah, just add true. a little bit of water. A little bit of tonic water, yeah. Indeed. So we'll take, let's see. This isn't a full thing. So I right. feel like what we, we, well, actually, the, it's going to be a little difficult to put the ice glasses yeah. in these tiny little cordless. So let's find a couple let's find, other. Let's find something like tiny and cute. Indeed. I got some tiny, cute little cubes. Okay. I'll find something else that it'll, it'll get us mm. a little bit better. I think the sippage is behind us, so I'll take these and I'll donate them to the tailor for the evening. Little cordial glasses are all the resilience. Mm. There we go. There we go. All right, That's we close. got two little guys. One for a yellow, one for a green. Indeed, one for here and one for here. A couple of ice cubes. We'll pop things around. We got just a little, just a little chartreuse and tonic. A very, a very approachable drink. A very Seems summer simple. drink, yeah. Summer drink, absolutely. I almost knocked over the glasses that I had chilling in the freezer. Maybe a smart move, maybe not. So I think what we'll do is, I guess we'll we'll try to do like a little bit of like, I guess equalish parts. Yeah, There's a little tonic. We'll eyeball it. Yeah, I think for the most part. We can adjust. We'll have our yellow chartreuse mm-hmm. on your right hand side, and then everybody else's mm-hmm. the other side. We'll go with the green. Or I'm trying to make these uh, just a sick. equally equally. Well. Yeah. I certainly tried my best there. Mm-hmm. A little bit of yellow on one. 
a little bit of green in the other. There we go. All right. It's kind of interesting to see the different colors of these guys too, and I guess this is a time as ever if we're describing colors oh, to true. kind of bring the bring the angle over and bring see the good camera. What what, do, what does the other cocktail angle like see about the colors of the chartreuse the, the chartreuses? You know, come over here the a little bit. Chartreusen. The chartreuse. The 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 folks who are chartreusen. Hello, buddy. Mm. How are you? A little bit of that. Do a little a little pivot. There we go. We have our green. We have our yellow. Honestly, I I can't see. Yeah. Every reference that we have is way farther yeah. ahead or a little bit. It's a little small, so I can't really tell if there's much of a difference there. But I can see. I can see a little. Even from up here, tint. like they like they do look kind of similar once you throw that ice cube in. Indeed, and we'll yeah. top we'll top the both of them yeah. with some tonic water. Yeah. Little little tiny splash. Classy snap. Yeah. Love that. Top those off. Yeah. Here we go. A little bit of what I'm only imagining to be equal parts. Yeah, just about. Good. There we go. Yeah. A little bit. I'll admit, tonic water goes more or less underutilized in my collection. I feel like I could go for a gin and tonic, right. but oftentimes I just, I'm like, yeah. why, would you, why, why would you do I that when you have a Negroni? Yeah. Exactly, I mean, right? If I don't on. have the Campari or Vermouth, then. Yeah. yeah. All right, we'll switch ourselves right. back as we go back and. Go for the bigger notes over there. Hello, bottle. Uh, hello, hello, bottle. bottle. Goodbye, Sorry, bottle. Go goodbye, bottle. Welcome back, bottle. So we'll right. maybe we do a little, a little sippy sip. A little sippy sip. So we've got yellow chartreuse and a little bit of tonic water. There's an ice cube in there. And although you know it hasn't been stirred a little bit, but uh, it's uh, it's floating in there. It's doing what it wants to do. Do a little smelly smell in the green while you're. Wow. That is incredibly pleasant. Yeah. That's so good. Please try Ooh, thank this. Thank you. It's like that that bitterness of the tonic. A little bit of like quinine in there. But there's also a sweetness to the tonic water as well that just like it it pairs really well with the sort of it's it's those uh, anise notes mm -hmm. that are coming through very, very prevalently, at least to me. And now it's even more it's even more vegetal as yeah. it mixes with the tonic water. And this was this yeah. was the yellow one, so this is the more sweeter one. Yeah. It is very, very That's pleasant. interesting, because I thought that oh, was going to be uh, like too much tonic. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I thought it was going to be like, put it like in the same room as tonic, mm -hmm. and that's what you want. Um, but man, the chartreuse like comes out like at the end. Yeah, yeah, I guess like the aftertaste, I guess the aftertaste is, it's it's tonic -y. I'll right. admit that. Yeah. I think the tonic water is like it's it's not expensive tonic water. Yeah. It's the yeah. stuff that comes in the yeah. cans you buy them. It's fine, water, which yeah. is okay, and it's good, and it tastes well in here. Yeah. And it leaves that sort of like bitter kind of slanted sweetness, but it's 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 accented by the chartreuse yeah. as well. And I think it's those more those more citrusy notes that I'm kind of hanging on a little little behind. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I almost wonder if it's like three part chartreuse, like one part tonic. Like, mm -hmm. it, it's where you want to be. Yeah. Um, to just like cut some of the heat. I think that's gonna be great. Like with the yeah, green. I think so. With the, I guess it's more. It's it's a little bit ish, like equal partish now. Yeah. And we got a little ice cube in there too. So yeah. as it kind of you know cools down and comes to temperature, the loot a little bit, change it a little bit. Yeah. And I wonder how that'll taste like. I mean, we'll, we'll be hanging these guys around, so maybe we yeah. taste them a little bit more later. Yeah. Give them more time to dilute, Indeed. change around. Let me take you and put you. This is the yellow oh, chartreuse. That's yellow. And we'll take the the green and see what we have in store. Still unmistakably like green smell. Like definitely um, smells like green. If we had to put a color on it, yeah. Uh, not a lot of cocktails like gin and tonic or vodka soda or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. like can I pick out what like the two ingredients are? But this smells like tonic water and green, and green chartreuse. chartreuse. Yeah, I feel like to, for me the spirit that always gets me at least on the nose is tequila. It's got mm -hmm. a very, it's astringent. It reminds me of my younger days. All that like yeah. bite yeah. and heat is gone. Yeah, not hot anymore. It's a lot more, the, yeah. those those more chartreuse notes. Yeah. Like this this feels a lot more chartreuse-y yes. than this one does. And I think it's just, be, it's, it's probably at the lower ABV. Yeah. It's the sweeter notes they're kind of blending. Actually, the sweetness now, I, I can even say like the one with the yellow chartreuse is almost a little too sweet with the tonic that. water. Yeah. But with this, this is like a lot more balanced. This feels like, a legit cocktail on its own. It pushes it towards like what the yellow is like standalone, mm -hmm. except like it's not, it's got a different mouthfeel. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, and it's also, it's, it's bubbly. It's a yeah. tonic water from a can, so it's got a bubbleness yeah. to it. Also like going back to like, like flavor notes, like it's mm -hmm. all like licorice. And then at the end, like it's, it's a spice cabinet, but it's mm -hmm. all green spices and, oh, and yeah. plants. Like, oh yeah. Um, 
That is delicious. Yeah, I like the I like the almost like uh, it's it's like when I think of when I think of the more minty Back notes, like it comes to me like like for a fernet, I feel like it's a lot more like like mint gum. Mm -hmm. But this is almost like because we used to have like a mint plant at home. I think it was a right. chocolate mint or something. Like this yeah. is more like I took a bite of the mint, um, but it didn't, didn't touch my tongue at all. Right. I took a bite and then I threw it away, and that's like the that sort of like leafy yeah. menthol ish flavor that's kind of sticking around which is incredibly pleasant it's a, it's very much like like the theme of chartreuse being right. like a summer drink yeah and mixing it with your tonic water feels incredibly appropriate mm -hmm. the weather is getting warm we're getting closer to summer so we are. it makes sense this feels very very topical yeah just like thinking about like what do you do like something like this complicated it's like oh we're gonna cut it with like soda or tonic or whatever like i mean like i want like a like a little bit of like citrus peel, like expressed mm -hmm. on there, like just to keep layering on that flavor. But it's tough to find like really good two ingredient cocktails. Mm -hmm. uh, this is probably one of them. This like, is a really good one. Yeah. I'm gonna have to think about like how to replicate this with like my genipi at home. Right, I wonder like, too. Yeah. I'd love to see some tasting notes on that. I also think too, like things with like you know a gin and tonic. Like gin is a base spirit; it right. comes in so many different shapes and sizes. Yeah. Versus something like you know yellow and green yeah. chartreuse. Just to keep it specifically to these two bottles right. here, of course there are other iterations of it, and apparently different vintages now. Oh yeah, yeah, you yeah. Can keep for for forever. For yeah. Forever. Uh, it's interesting that like. In particular, if you had to pick like two ingredient cocktails that have like a smaller mm -hmm. like subset of variations, mm -hmm. like the thing that you play around with the most here is basically the temperature that you drink it at right. and the ratio of mixer right. to otherwise and water if you put a little ice in it or otherwise, or even chill the whole thing first. Yeah, I'm really interested like as we drink more things that are complicated, like which drinks like celebrate the chartreuse mm -hmm. and like which drinks celebrate like the other like base spirits that are doing it because yeah like there are some things that like chartreuse is there and it's like one of five ingredients right mm -hmm. um there yeah. are some things where like it's very very boozy mm -hmm. um and the chartreuse is just a tiny little piece of it because it's a two ingredient drink exactly but like the chartreuse punches above its weight yeah um, interesting to think that sometimes like the spirit in question the, the feature one here being chartreuse mm -hmm either has its characteristics follow through mm -hmm. to the end of the drink or it somehow mixes with the other ones either well and balanced mm -hmm. or it disappears or it overpowers or whatever may have you but i wonder how i would think intuitively that chartreuse if you mix it with other things is going to try to stand up above right. everything else yeah but i guess we'll see yeah i know right yeah i guess we'll see we'll have we to keep on. a uh, like a running tally of a like... watchful lie of like depending on what i mean so far like as when chartreuse is drank on its own yeah it follows there yeah there's, there's nothing else there holding yeah. it down yeah if you have a little bit of tonic water in there chartreuse loves to carry the green chartreuse at least with mm. your tonic water and then it, it still sticks around i yeah. mean neither of these are like drinking straight tonic water right yeah, um, chartreuse in there and it's noticeable yeah and then like I, I i will enjoy like a can of tonic water by itself every now and again like fair, it's yeah, it's, yeah. it's got a lot of sugar in it it's you know delicious uh, mm -hmm. and maybe even it's a little medicinal maybe a little bit the tonic yeah water it's good for me yeah, uh, it's good for us but That's it's better with a green i think because the green has less sugar in it mm -hmm. like so like, true. of course this is nicer because mm -hmm. uh yeah. You know, a little coasty coast. Let's put them up in the front. Put them on the Otherwise, display. I'm going to keep drinking it. There we and go. And then there won't be anything to go on the camera. There'll be plenty more cocktails this evening. I think the next one that I want to jump into is we've been talking a lot about the last word. Yeah. And the last word is like, I think leading up to this particular stream, this is this has been a multi, this has been a multi, oh, yeah. multi month process planning the whole logistics and stuff, yeah. which has been exciting and very, very enthusiastic for me. It's the la like mm -hmm. the thing that was I was getting hyped up the most about was the last word. Right. Because I feel like so many, so many like other cocktail creators I know like talk about cocktails mm -hmm. and they're like whatever their favorite one is. And the last word, at least for me, has been the most unattainable, right. especially recently because of the shortage of the chartreuse bottles. As opposed to like like you know going through the journey of trying to mix more and more complex cocktails, like things like Campari, like mm -hmm. once you got a bottle of that, you can find a little bit more. Or trying to find just the right vermouth mm -hmm. for Negronis or your uh, Manhattans and how to like. Right properly mix things together in a way and garnish it appropriately as well um in the case of your manhattans with the little cocktail cherry or twists and stuff but last word I, I don't really know too much about other than it's it's got chartreuse in it yeah uh it's weird like i i appreciate the the concept of there are approachable like staple cocktails right mm -hmm. um and one of them like is the last word in the way that like 
a Manhattan or like an old fashioned or a mm-hmm. Negroni or or whatever it is um, like a like a daiquiri, right? Like you have these cocktails that are like by their very de- definition, like where people start when they want to be inspired. Mm-hmm. Uh, Last word is a weird one because, I mean, like you said, um, there's probably one bottle you don't have in your home bar that goes in the last word. And for mm-hmm. me, like, chartreuse was, like, easy to get, like, and, mm-hmm. like, gin was easy to get, like, I didn't want to carry around, like, fruit in the house, so, like, that was always an obstacle. And mm-hmm. then, like, exactly things like Luxardo, I, I just don't keep because, like... Mm-hmm. like I want to go to the store to buy four bottles when I can go to the store to buy one. Exactly. Um, yeah. Well, luckily, I've got a little maraschino back here that we will be able to use, which is great. Preparing specifically for that. Uh, I've had the I've had I've had the maraschino for actually quite a while, and oh, I think my marker is Uh-oh. broken. That's okay. Well, mostly because I I don't even know what it is that I bought it for originally. Right. Like something called for maraschino liqueur, and I was like, you know what? I might as well get a bottle of that, and it shows up very rarely, and right. I use it very, very sparingly. It just doesn't show up very much, um, but where, where it does, it shines very well. I feel like right. that's almost the thing that accents and follows right. through with most drinks, but this being combined that. with the chartreuse, like, who is going to come out on top? Yeah. I feel like it's going to be the chartreuse. Yeah. I'm very excited. I have, I have opinions about this. I have oh, yeah? opinions okay. about what stands out the most All in right. like, okay. Last Word, but I don't want to taint your like. Oh, we get to go into this a little bit. Yeah. I get to go into this a little bit. You long. have to go in this line. Indeed. Like, Indeed. It's, it's a rare, like, I love two, ingre- uh, two ingredient drinks. I love three ingredient drinks. The four ingredient drinks are getting four, a little like, like. This is so much work. <laughs> right. Like, and right. like, I will go to a bar and get a last word. I would never make it at home, mm-hmm. which is good that I'm like at a bar. Exactly. Um, so that I can have one because four ingredients Indeed. is too many to like measure out and shake. And leave leave that for leave that for the, the bartender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I just want to sip my cocktail. Exactly. But I want to mix it. So yeah. we'll we'll jump into it. Hmm. Last word is made with I think I think it is it is another similar formula to that of the Negroni, where you mix mm-hmm. things in equal parts together. It's just in this case the number of ingredients that you include, mm-hmm. which in this case is four. That's kind of like the formula for mm-hmm. a word. Mm-hmm. And in this case our formula calls for equal parts in three quarters. Quarter ounce, 22 milliliter bases of gin, green chartreuse, maraschino liqueur, and this one says lime juice. Yep, that is correct. Wonderful. I I for some reason thought that it would be like lemon juice, but lime specifically. Lime specifically, yeah. I feel like that would go really, really well with the chartreuse. So yeah, yeah. Uh, That I mean, again, like doing like just tastings by themselves was like the thing that like this is crying out for is maybe like like a little like texture um, mm-hmm. and then like citrus oh yeah for sure um but yeah like uh again like, like lemons i have lemons at home i never have limes mm-hmm. like that's another obstacle like making a last exactly word. yeah and even get like getting it like ha- knowing that you have to like there's a lot of prep that sometimes goes into streams depending on like like what kind of ingredients we need right. getting the mixer scares me yeah. because i i only it used to be not it used to be more intimidating mm-hmm. because i didn't know exactly what mixers i needed to get and i knew that they were perishable so right. i would never go out of my way to buy something unless i thought that i was mm-hmm. going to use the entire bottle of white grape juice or mm-hmm. orange juice or lemon juice what have you um and now i actually have a new reason to be afraid of mixers because the other day i had a, a bottle of pineapple juice that i was carrying mm-hmm. around and i kept it in my little cooler over here mm-hmm. and Pineapple juice will ferment over time. Yeah. If something ferments, it's going to release carbon dioxide. Mm-hmm. It builds a pressure in the container. And I would think if you're creating a product like pineapple juice, right. the container would be specifically designed mm-hmm. with that pressure in mind. Um, it was not. And I don't feel like name dropping brands here. However, there was a bottle of pineapple juice that made a beautiful mess of my living room for uh. a little while, which was very, very, very shocking to me. So I'm afraid of pineapple juice now. We do have pineapple yeah, juice. Okay, yeah. Fresh stuff. Yeah. Which would be great. Fancy. Indeed. Yeah. Xenosorade says, oh, hey, I know that guy. It's yeah. Pikachu. You got Chonk over here just always mm-hmm. observing these beautiful yeah. little tails over here. He never gets yeah. the drink, though. But a last word. Yeah. Let's start off with that. So what we need to do is apparently shake everything together, add it all together, and then put it into a chilled coupe glass. There is mm-hmm. at least one or two coupe that has been chilled in it's advance. So like any good cooking show, we prepare things nice. in advance. We've got a gin. It says preferably tankery. And I have, Ooh. if we're gonna do a last word, I feel yeah. like we have to be inge- uh, ingenuous to what it's calling for. At least this is according to uh, thefoodandwine.com. Yeah. Zeno Sarde, thank you and welcome over here. I have a fine time to pop on as well for chartreuse. I know, right? This is basically an exclusive experience because nobody has chartreuse anymore. I feel so big. Right? Yeah, it's, it's such a big, <laughs> as I stared at the liquor store the other day and I was getting gin, I was like, what do I get? I opted for the beef eater because I right. know beef eater is a favorite of both right, of ours. Yeah. And I saw the big bottle. There was a 
I think a 175 mm. liter bottle of tankery Ooh. there. I was like, do I take the plunge? It'd be a lot of gin. And I was like, no, no. no. I need to I need to yeah. use what I, you have to go through the bottle that you, you have do. first, unless you run a big show. Love then, the one you're with, like. Exactly, yeah. and then, and then you know, to, to death do us part. And when, when she's empty, yeah. you know, we move on. So we have our tankery. We also have a bottle of Luxardo that Brad's reaching for, and we got limes. We need three quarters of an ounce, so I feel like that'll be maybe a full yeah. lime, maybe two. We'll see about that. Mm. I'm ready to put that into a cocktail shaker. So, all right. So how do we want? How do we want to split this? I'm terrible at delegating tasks here, and I'm getting a little bit better uh, uh, with doing what? so. Here's a shaker. There we go. All, all right. right. We got a cutting board over on your side as well. Got a cutting board. There's also a citrus a citrus squeezer oh, over there yeah, in one I of the containers. Got all the there's there's all of the all the tools tools are over there all right and all of the garnishing tools and cleanup are over on this side. Nice. Let's see. One of these. Indeed. I'll give you I'll give you the lime okay. the lime for now. I, I'll grab if you can hand me one of the jiggers. Oh, any yeah. any jigger will do. Yeah. Sweet, awesome. I have noticed that you like delegating the uh, cutting of the citrus to. Oh, is that uh, is that a habit? Yes, is that a habit I have? I am pretty I sure. I never even every noticed that. Every time you have a guest oh, bartender, it's like I love uh, cutting citrus. So it's, like, it's interesting. You can handle the knife. My subconscious there mm -hmm. is, you know, mm -hmm. maybe you know. it's because I'm also on like the uh, the the sunlight side. It's like, possible. I mean, yeah, these lights are a little unbalanced over here. Actually, mm -hmm. I feel like maybe I'm the more maybe yeah. maybe. Yeah. More than yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really know. Yeah. Do a little jig over yeah. here. We we'll see. Mm -hmm. So first thing we're gonna do is. Oh, actually, I hate to do this to you, but can mm -hmm. you hand me another jigger? Yeah. This is the one metric jigger that I have. You gave out metric in the mouth. I know. I know. I just want everybody to like go go do the playback. Mm -hmm. uh, like scroll back on the vod. I did. I did that. I did that. Any jigger will do. I did. But here's a better one. <laughs> but yeah, this one measures in our ounce components: two mm. ounces on one side, one ounce on the other. The other one would be 50 mils on one side, yeah. or 30, or whoa, 25 mils on the other one. Yeah. It's 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 science basically. Zeno says I have the same juicer and love the heavy duty enamel, dude. It's this one in particular. I feel like if you use it enough, that acid tends to go. It's it's eaten away slowly but surely to it there. But uh, I've only had it for a little while, so. Relatively speaking, I think. That but is it works. the limiest smell in lime. Love limey lime. I think, honestly, I love, I think I like limes better than I like lemons, I think. Just yeah, like, I'd agree I agree that. Not as sour, not as much a sour guy, yeah. uh, but limes are just like, I don't know, they feel more tropical. They're they tart. feel more approachable. Tart as opposed, as opposed to, to sour. sour. Yeah. Exactly. So what I'm doing over here is I'm gonna add three quarters of an ounce of gin. Food and wine says specifically tankery. And I have a little nip of tankery, so that's just that's just what we're gonna use over here. And because I don't have like the two part shaker over here, I think I'm gonna add. Actually, I'll add the, add, I'll add the ice now, as opposed to having the ice in one side of the shaker oh, to let it like come down to temperature yeah. and like give off a little bit of water, dump it out, and then combine it later. But this this little cobbler over here, they don't really give us the same opportunity. Grab. I don't know exactly how many large mm. I'm gonna need this time, so I'm just gonna go with one. I'm gonna try to crack it over. Oh. I'm gonna bother you for a bar spoon as well. Mm -hmm. See, we added our thing in there. Yeah, we're ice hanging here. I think we're gonna have uh, just the perfect amount of lime juice. Perfect. You want the bar spoon? Any bar spoon will do. I'm gonna try Except not for this to get one. our ice shards. Oh, you grabbed the metric bar spoon? <laughs> I can't believe I told you. Uh. Let's see if I can have an oh, easy time with this. Yeah. Oh! Oh my goodness! I've that was never been able to do that with the like the big rock. You know what? You know what? It's one all right. It's all right. I had I had one. I'd say it's a big win, but it was like half the cube, and technically half the cube is a big win for me, as opposed to not being able to do the cube like literally at all. How much we got in there? Oh yeah! Look at that. Oh yeah! That is That's looking pretty, pretty much, perfect. much perfect. Three quarters of an ounce to 22-ish milliliters of our lime juice. And we're also going to need the equal parts of, in this case, our victim of choice is going to be our green chartreuse. And then our Luxardo Maraschino. Maraschino is going to have a little more like, let's see, if we had to sum up chartreuse's flavor, I'd say it's a, it's, it's a kind of a spicy anise. Right. As opposed to Maraschino, ooh, it was a little... A little, a little heavy. heavy. You, know you know what? You're committed. I'm gonna be okay. I'm committing to the bit. Make the recipe your own. Exactly. Yeah. It's 
effectively still equal parts mm. if I screw up just as badly with the maraschino, which is going to be a little more like a cherrier notes. Mm. More like a fermented cherry, like cherry pit, I'd say, at least. That's the interesting thing. I would agree. Like, that's very much like the stone of the cherry as opposed mm -hmm. to the, like, actual cherry itself. It's very nice to be validated. Mm -hmm. I love yeah, that. Yeah. I'm here. I'm here to support you. <laughs> All right. That's why I'm here at the bar. Absolutely. I'm your hype man. Indeed. And for those of you who aren't familiar, which you should be, More Than Awesome's out here like all the time oh, hanging yeah. and chatting stuff. Oh, and, yeah. And it, it totally, totally his idea to uh, come up yeah, and yeah. Uh, be, a, be a guest. And was, it's, it's really... It's not crazy. at all strong-armed in any way. No, absolutely not. I mean, he very politely knocked on the door yeah, one day, yeah. just like, hey, I'm here. And I was yeah. like, whoa, well, yeah. while you're here, you yeah. might as well come in yeah. for a cocktail. But you have to bring two bottles in. Like, it's true. It's, I mean, that's yeah. just the cost to enter. It's either a password, some sort of yeah. monetary value, or some sort of bottle that we get to use and we yeah. get to, to drink as well. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Amy Chess popping in and saying, hello, bartenders with with X's. They both have X's there. Oh, hey. Which is great. Good evening, Amy Chell. How are you? So we got everything. We've got everything that we need. I think we got everything we need. Equal parts maraschino and green chartreuse and lime juice and gin of some sort. I guess they said tankery, so I guess the the stand in here would be a London dry gin. If that's the if you're if you're denoting your gins by that, and we'll give this guy a little bit of a shake, maybe a lot of bit of a shake, yeah. and then we'll put it into a chilled coupe glass. And I think I don't know. I see here that it gets garnished with some maraschino cherries. Yeah. Is that what you've seen in your I have Mine normally have like a nice little like cherry in there. Oh, nice. I like never chill my coupe glasses. Ooh, this has such a nice little cloudiness to it. I love that. I'm going to take these bottles and put uh, them over here yeah. as I do a little shaking. You do a little and then shaking we'll, and then I'll get the, the camera get the ready. Over. Cool. My wine preserver says Amy Chow, bottle thingies came in today, the gas squirts bottle of Wachimafuzi. That's great. You know, those those liquids actually have, uh, they're lighter than air. You got it. You got it. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta turn a little bit. My, uh, the container that I, uh, the, the apparatus that I use to hold up the angle is very, it's been very wobbly today. I think the counterweights are not yeah. counterweighted, which is great. Yeah, I think we had a, it was two weeks ago when I had our friend Kirsten on for a, a wine stream and I was talking about the different, um, the preserver bottle that right. I have. It's like some inert gas. I think it's argon or something oh, yeah. like that. And it kind of floats over top of your spirit. I guess technically you could put it in your liqueurs and stuff too, yeah. and it would work out easily as well. Uh, but I guess it, you know, it all depends. So we'll pour this over top. Our last word. Ooh. What like a spectral color? Yeah, it is a uh, it is a gorgeous drink. It's beautiful. Uh, it's got a nice like. I always wondered like where this like almost almost glow seemingly glowing under a black light -like color came from. And now knowing that it's got lime juice in there yeah, and that sense. green chartreuse, yeah. that's absolutely what's happening here. Yeah, I uh, I just want to like underlight it and uh, like drink it in like a dark dark room. Right? I'm the kind of villain who enjoys their last words, dark. In a dark room with dark. no lights on, alone, staring at my evil plans. Mm. Got a couple of maraschino cherries over here that we'll put over mm. top. I need something to stab them with. I'm gonna go with... Got this little pointy, got this little pointy thing. Let's just see if I can, like, actually get in there and skewer these guys. The nice thing about like putting the cherry in there is, uh, like, the get show a little continues. juice, right? You get, a, yeah. you get a little bit of residual juice. And it's delicious. There's one. There's one yeah. cherry. Yeah. Zeno says the last word is delicious. It is. Uh, it's it's one of my like go-to cocktails. Like if a bar has it on the menu. Oh, excellent. Because right. I never want to uh, like steal all of their green chartreuse. I feel like three quarters is a lot to ask for. Right. <sighs> hello there, you. Well, hello there. How are you? My goodness. Uh, what a beautiful drink. I do really like the like the the contrast of colors between mm. like that cloudy yeah. green and the, the bright from the maraschino. And then like as we like sit and watch, like there's uh maybe a little bit of like bleeding like happening. Just a little bit. It's kinda it's kinda sitting the at the bottom. Yeah. I feel like when I when I take my own reference photos, I gotta like get a little bit of that. Oh yeah. A little red that's that on the bottom. A little bit of red that's at the bottom. That is so I like that. That's cool. 
It also, like, from the angle that I'm at, does kind of look like a, uh, like, comic book, uh, like, alien. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it does, it's looking a little alien, I'll get that. Yeah. His little green eyes, he's just, he's just a happy boy. Yeah, happy little, happy little LGM, little green men and stuff, in a cocktail glass, at least. All right, let's, shall we switch so, back to the other uh, angle yeah, so we, we can, can give this thing a, a taste and a taste. smell and yeah. stuff? Cool, yo. I guess so you 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 have, you have your thoughts on this, oh, yeah, so yeah, I'm gonna try to. Opinions. We'll try to. Yeah. I, yeah, this is this is cool. This is my my I'm first gonna watch and last judge you. word. Obviously, I smell maraschino cherry. I also <laughs> smell green chartreuse, which is coming off as very uneasy right mm -hmm. now. There's like, I feel like it's probably clouded by the garnish, which is also maraschino cherry, mm -hmm. but I can't smell the maraschino slash maraschino mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. Who knows how to say that correctly? It's good smelling. Whoa. Like I have a chorus of like uh, wow. angels and like a sunbeam coming down. That is like, it's so well balanced. <laughs> it's weird, right? It's so well balanced. It's almost like, it's almost like, it's like candy, but it's also kind of, kind of like not so, it's, oh, it's sour and it's a little sweet and it's nice and cool. I was like, I was legitimately thinking that it was going to be a lot more yeah. chartreuse forward, Oof. but I actually think it's the maraschino that's kind of taken, like, like, um, yeah. kind of taken the forefront there. When we talk about like, where does it like punch above and punch below, mm -hmm. like, like the chartreuse, like is not the starring player. Right yeah, now. it's very much a supporting yeah, character yeah. here, and but it supports so well. It provides to that like, like evolution of the drink over time. Like what I'm getting like now, mm -hmm. after having sipped it, mm -hmm. is a little more chartreuse as opposed to in the beginning of very maraschino in your face. Yeah. Very yeah. much so. And that like tartness from the lime mm -hmm. juice is so well put there. I was gonna say, I like mine with a little even more lime in mm -hmm. there. Like I can uh, see that honestly. But like, yeah, like to me, like it's a Luxardo drink, like mm -hmm. which is wild. Yeah, yeah, as opposed to it being associated with green yeah. chartreuse like yeah. so, so often. Because Tanqueray like is not a like super passive gin. Like mm -hmm. it definitely yeah, it's got has. Character. It has up on its own. It's got, no, that, that's lost. Mm -hmm. like, like gin is like the the hardest one in there to like identify for there's me. a lot of other powerful players around here so if somebody's got to come out on top and it's yeah. the maraschino in this yeah. case yeah who knew indeed uh, Zeno's asking over here can you sub absinthe for green chartreuse I, yeah i don't know um you know i gotta hey, be hey, careful what's, what's uh up? Zeno, Zeno lives uh in my town uh he's my buddy uh so, oh yo buddies yeah, yeah. From across I, the I, gotta, I gotta not US. call him by his real name but yeah uh we found something called Genipe, which mm -hmm. is like a very absinthe green chartreuse that I think would play really well. Um, I'm still hunting for that perfect bottle that will replace this, you know, one like eighty dollar bottle that I can't find anymore. But and two. it seems to be like a common goal between people and mixologists yeah. everywhere. Like people are trying to find like a substitute for uh, mm -hmm. for chartreuse specifically right. because like it's gonna be it's gonna become harder to find. Even more harder to find now than it will be, you know, eventually. Yeah. Your, Your first last word, that's yeah. delicious. Oh, like. yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's interesting, too, because, like, it, it kind of takes some of my, like, predisposed uh, assumptions about, like, what's going into it and right. kind of turns it around. Like, chartreuse being this more, like, exotic spirit to mm -hmm. me, I was like, it's gotta be the front runner here. Right. But it isn't. It's something that, at least to me, is a little more familiar, mm -hmm. just because the, the Luxardo has been in my collection for a lot longer, and I've had more drinks with it. Mm -hmm. And I really like it. I love the way that it plays with mm -hmm. other ingredients. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've ever had it with something that is tart before. Right. So the lime juice, I, I, in my head, I thought it was gonna be lemon juice, and I was almost not as much looking forward mm -hmm. to the last word, because mm -hmm. I thought it was gonna be a lot more sour forward. But with the lime juice, at least for me in my mm -hmm. palate, it's a lot more approachable, yeah. which is very, very exciting. And of course, I, I danced around the whole gin factor in there. Right. I like gin. Yeah, yeah. I love gin very yeah. much. And I feel like I still, like I, I as much as I can love something, mm -hmm. but not know the full story, like I feel like I have, my relationship with gin is like, I accept for you for who you are, right. but I don't know what's going on. Right. But you're fine just the yeah. way you are. You do your thing. Exactly, like I don't, like I can't quite, pick apart all the flavors mm -hmm. that gin has to offer mm -hmm. aside from i guess what we're calling juniper berries right which i've never had a juniper berry before mm -hmm. but despite the fact i have juniper berries but yeah. i've never bitten into them before but i feel like they're 
you know, they it probably tastes like gin. Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah. I would imagine yeah. so. Yeah. I mean, gin and juniper. And, yeah, you know, but sense. I mean, like you do have a gin palate because, mm-hmm. like, you know, like your beef eaters and like your tanks and whatnot. Um, you also like your botanist and like mm-hmm. other things. So, like, you can pick out the things that aren't just like like neutral base spirit infused with you know mm-hmm. iron or juniper. For sure, because, yeah. You know, there's the special stuff and like. Uh, it took me a while to really love the last word and start to like appreciate all of the harmony of flavors that we've got mm-hmm. like, uh, as opposed to oh this is very bitter or oh this is very tart or oh, this is very like absinthe yeah. like, uh, like I feel like sometimes when you approach a drink like this for instance I feel like as the number of ingredients go up you mm-hmm. almost kind of I guess it depends on your perspective but you come in with this expectation that like well if there's five ingredients in it I should be able to taste all five ingredients right. or these numbers of ingredients are going to combine into like a sub flavor and then right. evolve into something else like a while ago like banana is, an, is a potent flavor in mm-hmm. bubblegum yep. and if you take your banana and your cherry and other fruits and stuff it becomes bubblegum and then when you take those and add other things to it that bubblegum is now what combines right. with your other spirits as opposed to you know something tasting more banana cherry gin for instance mm-hmm. it'll be like bubblegum gin which actually sounds delightful now that i think yeah. about it i would not be mad at that yeah uh yeah, like uh, like this would always be my last drink of the night. Mm. Like, we went out somewhere, like yeah, kind of aptly like named. Nice, yeah, like, named. Here's last my word. last word, and then like I learned to really like it, mm-hmm. uh, and now it's like okay, I'll start with the last word mm-hmm. while I figure out what I want, like because when you get that balance right, like mm-hmm. uh, when you get the right amount of lime juice and the right kind of gin and everything, like it is like a symphony like, mm-hmm. of drinks. Uh, we found a bar that doesn't have green, but they've got Genepi and they, okay. they do a ratio where they do twice as much Genepi to everything else. So okay. instead of so it being little, three quarter, three more. quarter, three quarter, and like three quarter, like it's three quarters all the way and then more mm-hmm. of the, uh, the green substitute. Cause like even though you can't like really like pick it out in there, yeah, like the green is assertive. Absolutely, it's just everything else in there. Is and like, I, and I would even say too, like to your point about like this feeling more like a Luxo, Luxardo. Drink. Yeah, like I I mean not to mess with something that's apparently perfect to a number of people, but I really could use less Luxardo, yeah, more lime, yeah, and more chartreuse. So I guess even dialing back on the gin, mm-hmm. like the gin is almost mm-hmm. just like. Playing pure support, but only, yeah. only support there, not yeah. really showing very much. Yeah. But you know, to a to a more complex palate than mine, would probably know a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, and I mean again, like you know, like I told you, like, like I uh, I like mine very tart, so mm-hmm. like having the extra lime juice like is fun because mm-hmm. um, you know I. It's either a Luxardo drink or a lime drink for me, yeah. and I like yeah. it when it's a lime drink. Uh, I like my lime drinks to be mixed with other fruits as well. So oh, lime yeah. drinks are very, they very evoke very tiki to me. Yeah, so I it's got that. a lot of like f- fancy garnishes and rum mostly. As and a mug with like drink. an angry guy on it, like yeah. going like this. Exactly, yeah. little tiki like faces yeah. that are judging yeah. you as you drink the drink. I love it when my glass judges me as I sip it. Yeah, I mean something needs to. Exactly. Yeah. So that is a last word, a, a, a prohibition era cocktail mm-hmm. that apparently is, is very prolific mm-hmm. in its number of riffs and variations. Mm-hmm. Despite the fact that this is, you know, no pun intended, the last word, it certainly wasn't the final, no. the final word. No, which that's, I'm pretty, that's a different drink that's, entirely. I think that's got bourbon instead of gin. Even better. Yeah, Even there's better. one with tequila instead of like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like everybody like changes out that spirit, which just goes to show you like that other spirit's not doing the heavy lifting. Mm-hmm. Uh, the nice thing about this is that, uh, like, I think bad gin would ruin it. Mm-hmm. Um, but you got good gin, so I'm like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so that is that is one classic cocktail yeah. that utilizes green chartreuse, mm-hmm. and I think it only makes sense to kind of flip things around. Like, we had a little bit of time to spend with green chartreuse, so should we think we should go to yellow chartreuse and go yellow? to? Yeah. yeah, I think so. And I think you introduced to me the Alaska, yeah. which is a cocktail that I had never heard of this, previous to talking about the stream. Yeah, this is a wild drink. Like, there's a, there's a bar at home called Kingfisher, um, mm-hmm. and, like, the bartender there, like, is kind of world renowned. Like they, they opened up, uh, they would make anything you wanted, and then on their website they had a list of like 200 classic cocktails. Interesting. Uh, and it's just like, yeah, like just ask for any of these and we'll make it. So we flip through and we flip through and mm-hmm. we flip through, and mm-hmm. it's like, okay, this is too far. Like, Locked I want something with gin. Like, and I finally found the Alaska. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
which like the ratios on this thing are wild to me. Yeah, like, I took a took a quick look at the recipe book so far, and it looks like it's mostly yellow chartreuse and then gin, or I might be flipping. It's that. the other way around. Other way around. Yeah, other way around. I think it's mostly gin. Um, but it tastes to me like so much of a yellow drink. Like it's more yellow than yellow by itself. <laughs> Even uh, better. Which is like that weird cocktail rule. Sometimes like these two things come together, or these three things come together to form like right, something, something new and special. Yeah, parts, right? exactly. Let's take you and we'll put you over there. Unless you'd like to steal it away. Hey, each each of us yeah, yeah, as the bartenders yeah. will get to take a drink on our own. Oh yeah, no. I'll admit that's it's yeah that's I can see why it's a classic, but I don't know I don't know if I want to take that yeah, over here. Yeah, not yeah. yet at least. Yeah, and after this, I don't know what's coming up. So I, exactly, I'm this very is the, excited for this. I'm also very excited. There's some there. I, I did a little bit more research for this one than uh, than than otherwise. So we're, we're going all over the place. So our Alaska is made with, as Brad was saying, a lot more gin mm -hmm. than there is chartreuse there's kind of like this uh, this ratio game happening here uh in particular what we're gonna do for this one is we're gonna put everything into a mixing glass we're gonna mix it and then we're gonna um strain it out mm. so as i pop this up little name up here if you can grab a mixing apparatus yeah. and a bar spoon which i think yeah. we already have on hand we got a bar we spoon ingredients. do you have other gin or do you want to do eater. i think I, I don't know well beefy i am okay with going with a botanist if we want I to. I mean, we can go with the botanist if you want to. We'll go with the botanist I mean, yeah, we'll go with that, so. I feel like this will not be the last time that we require gin this evening. So it probably won't be. May maybe it will. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I don't even know what's happening. Yeah, maybe right. we're just, just throwing things together and there will be no shirt you want a mixing vessel? Mixing vessel, yeah, indeed. Right. We'll take that. And we'll then put then a big old ice cube in it. I will provide that. Spoony spoon. Indeed. So we're taking our gin, our chartreuse, and some orange bitters and just kind of mixing it together and pouring it out into... Does right. this one say a well chilled glass. It says a chilled coupe it glass. Should be a so chilled coupe glass. I've got more, right. more glasses. I only have one more that is chilled, so we'll take that. The best thing about like, using other people's jiggers is you don't know where the. Uh... Mm -hmm. So for this guy, if you flip to the other side, if we're looking for an yeah. ounce and a half or about forty-four yeah. milliliters, it'll be up to like that little bar fly logo. There's like a very thin oh, yeah. circumference on yep, the inside. Got it. It's interesting because I think one of the other jiggers over here there doesn't even have any linings on the inside, so it's very much a game of. I um, kind of know. Well, maybe I know how much is going in, but mm, right. you know, I, I'm an engineer, so I feel like it's it's never an exact, it's an exact, an exact, exact science. Mm. Um, but I try to do the cooking by the book. Mm. As we gotta do the cooking by the book. Exactly. So we're adding now 44 milliliters or an ounce and a half of our gin. In this case, we're using an Isla Dry, the botanist Ooh. gin. I think it's it's made its way. I, I only know about this because um, a buddy of mine got it for me, mm. and both of us, he a lot more than I, watches a lot of binging with Babish, and I think it pops up as yeah. a as a sponsor there a lot. I don't know where it is on here, but a fun botanist fact is like somewhere on here, like is the name like Melissa. Oh really? Yeah. I like, see Mentha, Galiuna, mm -hmm. Sambucus, and or I wonder if those are all the I wonder if those are all the botanicals. Oh maybe. That are supposed to be in there. Yeah. Is Melissa maybe Melissa's like a, a root of some yeah. sort of some sort of botanist reference. Yeah. Anyway. Or the botanist herself. We'll start with that. And then Indeed. because you'll know where this line is, like mm -hmm. Uh, half so, an ounce of our yellow. Indeed. So on the other side, we'll do half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of yellow chartreuse. As we noted before, a little bit more sweet, mm -hmm. more mild than the other one. Less like mm -hmm. in your face spice forward mm -hmm. and certainly less on the alcohol because it's almost a whole 10% less than the other guy. Pop that in there. Gives it a very, Beautiful. very light yellow color. Is a lovely looking drink. This very much feels like uh, what, what's going to pop out the other side is going to depend on what kind of glass that you put it in as well. I agree with that. The way that it like facets and stuff. Right. I'm going to put the Luxardo back in here. I don't know if that's coming out again. Oh, we also need, let's see. A dash of orange bitters. And a dash of orange bitters. So I'm going to grab, I'm going to go down here, grab the only orange bitters I got. These nice. nice short ones are very classic. It says only a single dash. I know I am very big into bitters, but... As something like this, we're gonna go for only the one, and that's all we that's get. That's a good dash. I mean, you gotta do the cooking by the book. That's true. It was a little dirty dash there, but I'll take it. Mm. Uh, take and pop it off to the side. Trying to overly ASMR the stream with me. Uh, right? Can everybody hear? Can everybody, everybody hear, hear the, the clang, stirring? clang, clang of the stirring? Oh yeah. 
what it's all about. A buddy of mine who is a lot more, he's a lot more into the ASMR than I am. I, I would say that I'm not familiar. Uh, he is very familiar. And he was saying how apparently one of the techniques that the ASMRers use is they take microphones and they put them upon their inside of their wrists. Uh -huh. So when they're kind of oh. touching plastic or bouncing yeah. tennis balls, or I guess like even like rubbing my fingers on the bar could be something that could be considered ASMR. And I was like, you know, is that something? Is that something worth having? Like, uh, I don't know. Maybe if I had some extra, like, teeny tiny microphones, maybe. Yeah. Christmas fear the uh, the bar with an axe is just oh gonna be. Uh... Just I say nothing. We speak only in terms of sounds. Mm -hmm. Banana. 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 Just banana. Right. banana. Ah, looks Sorry. like it's probably pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, if it's feeling chilled to you, Let's I'll see. have one of our chilled coupe Oh, especially if you got a chilled coupe glass. Oh, indeed. So it's gonna it's gonna be mighty mighty I like chilled. That. So we'll pull that out the Get way. Here we'll bring. You got a. Hot looking for a strainer. Strain. Got a strainer. Got strainers down oh, here. Look at this. We could use like a little julep strainer yeah. there. Just pop it on inside. All right, let's see how this looks. Hello, hello. Right. Welcome to... Oh, hi there. Last oh, word. Don't get knocked don't, over. Don't get knocked over. Don't get that knocked. might be one of our drinks at the end of the night. Do not get knocked. There we go. I'm actually kind of curious to see how this is going to look because the outside of the coop is very, very cloudy right now. And I wonder how it's going to look on the inside. Ooh. That is... Mm -hmm. Lovely. And this is what we're gonna do is gonna gonna express the Ooh. zest of a lemon over top or the peel. And I gotta get I have a peel over here somewhere. I do. I, nope, that is not a peel. That is a a zooler. Here's my peeler. Mm. Let's do a little a little expressing a little of our peels. We're gonna express express. Oop, over top, that is gonna smell and lovely. You're gonna make it like some pretty little. Uh, like, I don't know twist if this twist. one's gonna twisty twist, but I'll drop it on in there. Yeah, for our cute little. All house. right, and that is an Alaska. Dearest, mm. you stole my phone from me. May I have it back for a picture? <laughs> I'm currently using it. Just for okay, hold on, just a moment. I need to take my own. No, 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 like if you do something, wait, 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 no, 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 no I have to, I have to. I'm trying to add to my school years of. She is very cute, and she has her own agenda. And honestly, mm. gotta respect any person with their own agenda. Mm. Okie dokie, I mean, I'm tossing was, the phone back. Here you go. I was gonna have my own agenda by uh, drinking this while you were distracted. There we go. <gasps> you would take that away from me. I, I would take that. You away. wouldn't. I'm a monster. Oh my goodness. But oh. I'm gonna hit Control Number Pad Five. Go for it, and I'll switch on back, and it's yeah. time. So you can try. Experience. Oh. Zeno saying, if you zoodle an orange, yeah. is it a fruity, a fruit, a fruity, a fruity? I mean, depends on where you do it. Fruitsy, like zoodle fruitsy. or fru fruity? A fruity is opposed oh. to like noodle, noodle like a zoodle. Frutal, yeah. A frutal. Frutal. Uh, oh, that is an L there. I yeah. saw that. I see that now. The text is so tiny. It is a very tiny. Uh, I need to get like one of those big giant. Like, so Brad's been up here for a little while now, so we've been exchanging stories about just life in general. And one of the fun facts of my life is I used to be, I'm still into tech, and right. I used to collect very large CRT televisions, and I feel like if I had one of them still, I'd yeah. you know, drag it in here and just like put it on the big screen. Mount it up there just to have your Discord chat. That would be insane. Uh. Wow, can only imagine. So this is what we made. We made an Alaska, and it's hanging here. It's uh, it's it's down here with us mm -hmm. in the great state of Pennsylvania, as mm -hmm. opposed to being in... down there with me in the great state of North Carolina. Exactly, yeah. and far away from the actual Alaska, which is apparently a very very huge place. It's got one and a half ounces of gin, a half an ounce mm -hmm. of yellow chartreuse, and a yeah. single dash of orange bitters. Yeah, I wonder. I'm yeah. very curious to see how this plays out. So on the nose, obviously, as I continue to prove to myself, it smells like the garnish we use. It's very, very lemon. I was gonna say, what, what they can't see is that you express that lemon really well because there's a thin sheen of like Oh yeah, citrus actually oil. that is a very good point. I don't know if I can capture that here. I don't think the lighting is good enough for this, but. Yeah. Oh, maybe. Maybe. Maybe just maybe a little bit. I also want to give you like a like A little light. bit? Yeah, let me take a picture of that. It's actually, yeah, you can actually see yeah. a bit of those oils kind of hanging on top. Yeah. They're tiny little the like opaque little bubbles. Bit. I'll pop that into our on topic channel in our Discord server mm -hmm. just so everybody, mm -hmm. just, so, just so you can see what we see. Yeah. I have to find the one. There find the right space. There we go. Uh, yeah, uh, I agree. Like whenever I get one of these, like mm -hmm. it is all like lemon on the top, mm -hmm. on the nose, and I think that is just the consequence of a good garnish. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm a... Here we go. 
also going to watch this with great interest. It's nice. This is the wildest cocktail that I will like regularly get. This is like, it's like drinking gin, but better. It, yes. Uh... It's like, it's like, I feel like when you try to drink a base spirit, mm -hmm. it can be a little astringent. It can be a little too forward. It can be kind of bitter, very alcohol forward, you know, all, all those other things. This is very the botanist. It's very the gin and it's, slightly sweetened yeah and differently faceted from the yellow chartreuse it yeah. sweetens it up just a little yeah. bit it sweetens it up and going back to like i think yellow is very sweet mm -hmm. like when you put it in something like this where you know that like gin is punchy yeah like this brings in like 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 not necessarily syrupiness, but almost like like a raw white sugar. Yeah, like yeah. There's, there's I'm a, totally getting yeah, that. There's a weird texture component to mm -hmm. it uh, that's just like like a sense memory, uh, but is very good. And like this is like like I I know maybe my mind is prepped for it already. But we were talking about just just mentioning cereal infusions earlier, and this is like mm. fruit loop. Yeah. However, it's not biting into the loop. Mm. It's not even opening the box. It's like, there is a we Actually, hold on a moment. Yeah. I have a Fruit Loop candle, and we're gonna put this to the test. And I have it sitting on my other windowsill over here. And it smells Oof. like Fruit Loops. I don't think it tastes like Fruit Loops. No. Don't eat it. I don't eat candles, and it's screaming specifically not to. But what if you ate it a little bit? Maybe just a little. Yeah. So these little, this is from Dulce this candles. This is a very cute candle. And is, is a little, Little, yeah, little, oh, dude. actually, let's cocktail angle that for yeah, a second. This say. is this is my wonderful Fruit Loop candle, and it's it's great, and it actually has like these little like they're all little wax things, mm -hmm. and it smells like I don't think each one smells like, like a different color, flavor, yeah. but overall it smells very much like Fruit Loop. Excellent transition. I would say that this is almost there is a certain there's the, 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 the there's something that I can't quite describe about the Fruit Loop. It makes your tongue salivate in the same place like the Alaska does. Mm -hmm. And like, there's a, it's like, it's not the sweetness and no. it's not quite the, it's not quite the air of it, but there's this weird, like almost, maybe a, maybe a creaminess about uh, the Fruit Loop mm -hmm. flavor or an airiness about the Fruit Loop flavor yeah. that this is like, that's what I'm getting here. Cause like even smelling that I'm like, maybe it's a little citrus. And this is obviously a little citrus, mm -hmm. obviously. It's fun to think because like if you think about like Fruit Loops being like we're supposed to be like sugary like fruit mm -hmm. um, That makes sense like with the Alaska because like it is like lemony sugary mm -hmm. like all of the gin mm -hmm. Uh, I thought you were going to say Alaska is just ice, and I was like, yes. I mean, yeah, I mean if yeah. you were going to drink Alaska, it would be very uh, mm -hmm. apparently very Fruit Loopy. Or, really? Uh, no, yeah. well, not in the way that yeah. it, no. I, I feel like it'd be very salt water I mean, because there's a lot of snow. If you drank this and I said, it's kind of Fruit Loopy, you'd be like, what the heck are you talking about? Yeah, I can smell Would it. you like to, feel free to. Yeah. Ready? Tell me if that is, All smell I smell that. is lemon. Okay, yeah. and now and now smell the Fruit Loop candle. Okay, and now, now if you'd like to sip the drink, you may. And then you can take a bite of one of the Fruit Loops. We're not eating those. Yeah. There's already one that's a little bit Put them yeah. down! Oh, kinda, it's funny, it's almost like you can actually push the Fruit Loops <laughs> yeah. around as if it was a bowl of cereal. How does this taste so. like Fruit Loops? I don't know, man. I would say there is a certain oddness. A certain, okay. maybe almost a yeah. citrusy. I can taste the chartreuse. Yeah. And that is the only thing I'm tasting, right. along with like right. it's the yeah. smell of rubbing alcohol, yeah. but it's in my mouth. Yes, that's, that's gin. gin doing it for you. <laughs> that's gin. gin doing it for you. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's absolutely. That is what it not is. Fruit Loops. This is Fruit Loops. This is my yeah. gin. Thank you for letting me borrow your Fruit Loops, dear. I appreciate it greatly. Should I throw one? Please don't. Yeah. I, I might catch it in my I'll mouth. Be nice yeah, that's true. Because, you know, Possible. I yeah. Uh, I appreciate you uh, like holding back for my account. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to apologize for any sort of yeah. things that may like come it's, into your that direction. Is fine. They, 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 I can't say that yeah. you signed a waiver before you. Got I, it. I did. I, people that was, that was people a guess. get that, hurt. Oh, that, so I can just... that was a guest book that I signed. It was a guest book. I mean, little does he know, there's actually a full documented waiver in the uh, back of the yeah. guest book. Oh, I read. I read left to right. So. Oh, yeah. so you saw it. Uh, there yeah. we go. There we go. Wait. No. Left to right still goes. Samezies. Yeah. Samezies. 
But if it's on the last page of the book, then I didn't see it because using like manga style, we're yeah. from this side yeah. to that side, and we flip flipping the other one. Well, actually, this side to yeah. that side because yeah. your angle is yeah, not stage, stage left, stage left, yeah. stage right, you know all that stuff. So that's cool. Yeah, I like like I don't think I know of any aside from I guess like you know your gin and tonic right. where it is something that is specifically gin forward. Right. And you get to play around with like whatever you mix with it. Like it doesn't overpower the gin. It it adds to it. I would even say that the yellow chartreuse here is. And, and again, there's a number of botanicals that go into gins in general. The botanist I think has a number in them. And they say them all in the bottle. It looks like. And I would I I want to err to say that what the chartreuse does is amplify yeah. certain botanical flavors that are in the gin that you're mixing with. It has its own flavor. Don't get me yeah. wrong, but I think it mostly serves sense. to sweeten as well as amplify. And then the orange bitters is like. It's in there, yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. It, it's 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 mixed in with the lemony stuff, so I think right. it's a little beyond. You but. might need you might need more of the uh, the orange bitters to have them stand up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You might need a heavier glug. I'd say that too. Yeah, I think even even uh, as well for the lemon like kind of the expression of right. the lemon peel goes really really well here. Like I was not expecting specific like the lemon oil yeah. to kind of accompany this drink mm -hmm. as well as it has. Yeah. And that like pithy like lemon oil taste mm -hmm. like is outstanding. Like, yeah. Uh, I think it's a better version of uh, like just gin martini where mm -hmm. you basically yeah. you just basically drink really cold gin, right? Exactly. Um, yeah. that may or may not have been rinsed with vermouth. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd even be interested to see how like let's say if you took let's say an Alaska and right. you just you added like a little bit of vermouth to it, just to kind of make it almost like an Alaska martini, martini. Yeah. thing. But yeah. you know, people are, people can be very particular about their martinis. Kind of, oh yeah, yeah. Their gins and their vodkas and otherwise. Uh, I had one uh, that was a botanist martini in, classy, uh, classy. in in Boston in the hotel we were staying at. Mm -hmm. It was the perfect um, martini they described it as. And it was just two and a half ounces of like botanist in a glass. Mm -hmm. um, and it was in fact delicious. <laughs> That's uh, great. But was too much like mm -hmm. botanist for one person to consume. Exactly, right? I feel like that might have been a pretty pretty expensive pour there. Uh yeah. It was, it was a hotel bar. That's fair. It's yeah. understandable. Yeah, you know how much like these bar prices are. Exactly. I think it's something something else I was reading today. Oh, it was somebody talking about coffee and they were like like oh man, if you're trying to save money, just like don't buy coffee. Right. Make your own coffee all the time. Yeah. So and the same thing goes for like I think one of the reasons why I wanted to have a bar of my right. own was because Going out and about is really expensive if you want to like, like if you were an aspiring mixologist and right. you're trying to go out there and get, get into the weeds of things mm -hmm. and taste a bunch of drinks, yeah. it's really expensive. It's a very expensive hobby to get into. It is. Like you can drop a number of money on a bottle, like 60 or 80 on yeah. bottles of chartreuse, yeah. but they're going to stick around for a little while. Right. So really it's a very spread out cost and it doesn't hit you as hard as you, mm -hmm. it's just a very short term hit yeah. as opposed to a long term one. Uh, but if you're getting into it and you don't know what those flavors are at the, at the at the yeah. gate, yeah. It's, how do you it's learn? Tough. Exactly. Yeah. The only way to learn is to just keep on keep on practicing. Yeah. I'm still very much in that state of just continuing to practice and stuff. But that's the that's what that's makes the happen. fun. That's the fun of most yeah. of us, anyways. It's exciting. Yeah. yeah. That is uh, that was kind of my favorite drink. This is a good thing. Does it does it does it give you all the same associate because it is your favorite yeah, and it has yeah. memory to you? Does yeah. it give you all those same associates? Do yeah. you keep coming back to this and you're like, yep, I still I, yeah. am. Like, and, and the thing is, like, like with a drink like this where it's really two ingredients, um, it's so consistent, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if you get good gin, like you know what you're gonna get, mm -hmm. and if you don't get good gin, like you're gonna like you said, like it's gonna amplify everything that you don't like about it. Mm -hmm. um, but it makes me a happy boy. Nice. Like, I think of it as like, I just want to have really cold gin. Like, yeah. Yeah. And this definitely satisfies that itch. I want a little like, I want a little sweetness. Like, yeah. I want a little special. I think that there's like, there's very, I feel like each spirit has like a, a cocktail that you can mix with it right. to kind of have an equal playing field to compare it mm -hmm. to basically the same spirit. Like, I feel like, like if you're going for, if you're trying to compare whiskeys and bourbons, mm -hmm. like a Manhattan is a great way to go, or an yeah. old fashioned, for instance. If you're trying to compare gins, you could probably go with a Negroni, I guess. But I feel like this is a better representation of yeah. how to compare yeah. gins together because it's enough of the, like the character of the gin is not mm -hmm. lost right. and it's very forward, mm -hmm. but you're not just drinking it straight, yeah. which for, for some people can be very off-putting. Yeah. It's interesting, it's like I, uh, like I, I like a Negroni, um, 
I use very either high, high proof gin in it or like mm -hmm. very basic gin because I want juniper and nothing else. Mm. Um, so like with like a botanist, like I would never put it in a Negroni at home mm -hmm. because like all of the florals and botanicals in there, they're gone. I, I think, yeah. I think they go somewhere else, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like, you know, cause you've got the vermouth and the campari and like the, the scales get tipped. Yeah. Um, whereas with this, like. I don't know that this would work with like Hendrix or something, mm -hmm. like because it's going to be so like cucumbery. Yeah. Um, and it's not like cold and refreshing like most like you know like Ocean Sides or whatever that yeah. are very like like celery salt and like. These are very gin. nice notes that I'm getting from your special yeah. gins because you're very you're very very I'm like we're both boy. into gin yeah. but you are a much. Yeah. You've been at it a lot. I, I've been, been at it a lot. Well, I've seen yeah. plenty more gins yeah. out there. Yeah. So these notes of like cucumber, celery, yeah. salt, and stuff, I'm like, yeah. ooh, yeah. Huh, maybe I've been out of gin for a little bit too yeah. long. Like, yeah. I should get back into that and try I some like, more. I like the nicest way to say that, like, you're old. <laughs> <laughs> You've been at this a little longer. Hey, to be fair, yeah. I could have been drinking gin for longer. But, yeah. uh, I mean, for all intents and purposes, I've only been drinking gin for four years. So long. Yeah, yeah. I've for as many years as I have been legally allowed to have gin. Absolutely. Do Absolutely. some quick math on your fingers and yeah. it's a number. Yeah, yeah. So I think we've we've kind of gone past the area of comfort and familiarity. Yes. We have seen a cocktail, the Alaska, commonly used with yellow chartreuse. Mm -hmm. We've seen the last word commonly used with your green chartreuse, mm -hmm. and we've also taken a sip of it to see like what kind of flavors mm -hmm. we're playing around with. So I think now is actually I feel like it's time to go into the more like kind of weird, weird areas of the world. Things that are a little okay. bit changing. Yes. And interestingly enough, we were making comparisons between this cocktail mm -hmm. and a martini. Martini right. having basically very similar ingredients except you have your dry vermouth added to that. Mm -hmm. uh, but we were also talking about a different family of cocktails, the Negroni. Mm -hmm. Apparently, and I'm not super familiar with the Rachel Ray show, okay. but the Ra apparently somebody on the Rachel Ray show, her, her husband, John, mm -hmm. likes to combine the Negroni and the Martini together. Okay. And I saw this cocktail called the Negronatini and was like, how is, how is this... How is this chartreuse? Right. I don't know why this is calling for chartreuse, huh. uh, but it does. And to me, like, I'm, we're going to go through the recipe now. Yeah. And I want your thoughts okay. on why maybe they might have called this a Negroni okay. tea. Because, I, I mean, I, I don't really know what my thoughts are on that. I, I like how high and squeaky you're getting that's on a, this. It's a, yeah. that's, that's, what the, that's what the title yeah. of the drink says. Yeah. So I'm going okay. to take you with that. So our next cocktail of the evening is going to be a Negronatini. Negronatini. Supposedly, love child between the Negroni and the Martini. Hence, hence the little right. port portmanteau, or port port portmanteau. 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 Yeah. Thank you for speaking Southern for me. Portmanteau. Negroni. Negroni. Oh, interesting. My marker is like completely leaking over here. That's incredible. I think I dropped was, them on the floor the other day. But I also think it's got like a third thing they're trying to smash together. Like just the way it's like. Right? Like, like, the, like, like let's see. Yeah. Ma, na, the uh, the uh team. Yeah. It's the uh here that's yeah. just like, like, like word wise, it's not quite, it's not mm. quite getting there for mm. me. So. So how do we make this thing? So like, a Negronatini, if you think about it, I'm gonna ask you how you think you make a Negronatini, just based off of what we, what, just based off of what yeah. we have so far. Yeah. With our context clues. Uh, here's where I struggle, right? Like, because like a martini mm -hmm. and like a Negroni are already relatively close Similar together, to each other, right? right? Like, so we've got, um, like our base spirit, uh, and I assume it's gonna be a gin martini, so we're gonna start with a gin. Ding, we got uh, it. It's probably gonna be green instead of yellow because everybody loves this is green. Also true. Tick. Um, that's gonna replace your Campari in there, and then it's a question of: Are we doing sweet or dry, or are we playing like a cutesy, like perfect martini? Yet, mm -hmm. And we're we're doing a little of each. And I almost think like. My first like reaction is it's so wasteful, but like it's Rachel Ray's husband Jeff, mm -hmm. uh, Jeff John, Ray, John, apparently. John Ray, John Ray is probably gonna have you put like both sweet and dry vermouth in there, and that's what they're gonna call a, a Negronatini. 
my train of thought follows very similarly. Uh-huh. If we're going to take something that is normally gin, campari, and sweet vermouth yep. and combine it with something that is usually gin, dry vermouth, and some other stuff, right. then... In my opinion, chartreuse has no play here. Right. Evidently, we are mixing together gin, mm-hmm. green chartreuse. Sick. There is no vermouth Ooh. whatsoever. Instead, we have Luxardo Maraschino. Ooh. And then we add a couple of cocktail olives on top of it. So we're adding some of the, we're adding some of like like the dirty martini vibe to this, which is like. I found this as a very like yeah. we're, we're essentially well, essentially what we're doing is we're taking our green chartreuse mm-hmm. and. Adding olive brine to it. I was gonna say, I, I want this desperately to be like a very like salty drink, mm-hmm. like uh, like for it to work. Because mm-hmm. like I can see like you take something that's like highly vegetal and like you put like salinity in it. Yeah. Like it's just gonna taste more like that, which exactly. is gonna be good. Amplify the flavor. I'm very it's excited salt. to this. Oh yeah. yeah. So what we're gonna do for this one is we are going to add everything to a cocktail shaker, stir, and then garnish it with our with our Easy. beautiful. Uh, uh, what do you call those things? They're called olives. Oh, That's yeah, they're, yeah they're called, yeah. Indeed. So let's get a cocktail shaker. I'll grab All the right. Luxardo back from under here, All and right. we more or less have everything else that we need. I think we'll opt for the beef eater in this case. We'll dial things back down a little bit. Take it back to more. I'm gonna more learn from my mistakes characters. and get the actual, like, there we go. fancy uh, shaker. Indeed. I'll grab a big old ice cube and some little cubes as well. Essentially, like, eh. If there's supposed to be a science to this, we're supposed to take one of the big mm. cubes and some little cubes, right. and we put them into one side of the shaker, yeah. usually the bigger side, mm. as well as the two two mm. smaller uh, ice cubes, mostly so that they come down to temperature. Mm. As the ice comes to temperature, it might melt a little bit, and so all that water is going to collect at the bottom of this side mm. of the shaker, and then just kind of pour it off, just so you're not adding any... Yeah any uh, unnecessary or um, inadvertent dilution to your drink. Mm. I think for the most part, these metal containers, actually, they don't, they, the, the ice does not melt very much in here. Like right. something, something thermally about the uh, mm. the container is very, very apt for this particular application. Also not leaving it out yeah. for too long. Like it's true. It's, it's true. not too hot to. in here. Yeah. yeah. I tend to wind up like vamping way too much with it. Yeah. So some, I feel like if there is water on the bottom of it, it's mostly because somebody has been talking way some, too much. Somebody. Yeah. yeah. Get yeah. the focus back on the cocktails. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to take two ounces of Ooh. our gin, and we have two ounces of our green chartreuse, a bad. single ounce of Luxardo, and that's all that's mixed together. I'm calling an executive decision and saying, like, is this one that I can see the lines on? That's the one. Well, luckily, because we're going to get in two and one ounce, yeah. we don't even need no lines. Well, there we go. It makes it so easy for us. Now, before I do this wrong, what side am I pouring all the liquor in? We got the big, I mean, we got big side on the jigger, and then we'll pour into the smaller side oh. of the mixing shaker. So uh, we're going to put all the liquid stuff into the one that doesn't have yeah, the ice that in makes it. Sense. Pour out any water from the other one, mm-hmm. and take the liquids and put you them into the two salads. ounces of beef eater. Right? Indeed. The full two ounces. I figured that we had the opportunity to finally, you know, yeah. get close to the beef eater. All right. And then we're going to add two ounces of our green chartreuse. I find it interesting, too, that, like, for something that calls itself a, you know, a mix between a Negroni and a Martini, that we're adding, like, this much, like, chartreuse to it. Yeah. Also, like... Thinking about like how much liquor has gone into drinks we've made tonight, like we're already at four ounces. Like, mm-hmm. like, like John Ray likes to party because evidently, like, yeah. Like we're gonna have to get like one of the pint glasses out, I think. To we're gonna uh, get one of the. the... It's interesting because it'll. The picture I see, right? If yeah. you imagine martini, yeah. we're gonna go in a martini glass, maybe. Yeah. But like, I don't even know if we'll have enough space in a martini glass yeah. or even a coupe glass for that. Because this is gonna be a total of five ounces, yeah. whereas previously, let's see, with the last word we had. It was three quarters times four. So there was three ounces on there. Negroni is usually three ounces as well yeah. for total. You said one so, ounce of Luxardo? A single ounce of our Luxardo Maraschino. One lonely ounce? One lonely ounce. That's all we need. I'll pop that in there. I'm going to give things a shake as well. This one also calls for a chilled cube glass. Uh, I only have so much space in my freezer. So no, I'm sorry. No for this one. Sorry, but uh, mm-hmm. not sorry. For something that this is a... I don't know if this is like a, a, like a well-renowned love child or maybe it's something that's a little less i don't see any water in there let's see yeah that looks pretty good just a couple little droplets i think that's all right Right. let's give it a shake now we'll grab let's see we've got one of 
I was worried that this was going to be the, uh, the one shaker that uh, leaks. Oh, no. So the one shaker that leaks was the first one. So that's already out of the way. Actually, well, one of them... I think it's because there's two halves. Right. And I think I accidentally put one half in the wrong shaker. I think it was the last time I streamed. It also feels like it has to be, like, really tall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely making it work. I can see now, obviously, the side of the, the side of the glass is getting a little clouded mm. over. So it's it's doing its job. It's getting all nice and chilly. And so after this, we will just kind of strain it out into the glass that we have. I mean, it's, I think this is a more this is a larger coupe glass. So I think this will probably work for the amount of liquor we're going to try to put into it. We'll see that. All right, I'll hand that to you. Indeed, we'll grab the cocktail angle and bring it over here. I will prepare the olives and a skewer. Actually, I'll just do that first. That way it can be like, we can pour and garnish in one fell soup. Our uh, olives today provided by Goya, product of Spain, totally not sponsored, obviously not sponsored. Get a lovely look at these olives here. Fresh from the container, we got some nice ones here. I love olives so much. Ooh. I'm a big, big olive fan, so I will take that. Oh, you know what? Am I go for four? Yeah. I'll go for four. Why not? It Why wanted not? to put four on there. Let's, Absolutely. Let's make that happen. Pop this off to the side. Let me grab one of our strainers. There, I don't think there's too many shards in here, so I'm going to take this guy and hopefully... I don't like how tapered this guy is. And we'll give it a little bit of a pour. Our Negronatini. Which, according to the picture I have, is a very sickly green color. And Ours this is, is a, much prettier. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of ounces in there. Yeah, there's more There's more cocktail in there. You know what, why, uh, not, why not grab another glass? Yeah. We'll, we'll split this one into two. Yeah. I'm just going to do like a low class and a yeah. high class. You can take your fancy... Uh, Let's go for it. There we I'll go, our nice little die, die my glass. little die glasses. There we go. Oh, wow, there wasn't that much in there. Oh, I just got scared, apparently. Well, you know what? We got a, we got a little we got a little one for the... We got a little tasty one for the kids. This one's for the kids. Not the kids. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh, not the kids. <laughs> not the kids and the alcohol. Oh, the goodness. metaphorical kids. The metaphorical kids, indeed. Yeah. All right, and we'll top that off with here. Four you get olives. You get the olive. Kind of pop that in or whatever we got. All right. Beautiful. Whoop, I'm sorry. Uh-oh. Don't worry about that guy. There we go. And then, like, you know what? You you get one, too. Yeah. I'll pop you in there. It's effectively garnished now. And that is, Ooh. evidently, what would happen if you bred a Negroni and a Martini together. I'd say it's a little it's a little on the dirtier side. This is a very, yeah. this is a very yeah. dirty love happening yeah. here. I have so many doubts about this. Because uh, it kind of looks like a last word. Mm-hmm. Um, but like instead olives floating on the top exactly like i feel like these these sort of like saltier notes i wonder what they're going to do oh get over there so the big question is uh i smell chartreuse and I was, olives i was gonna say it kind of smells like like chartreuse yeah. and an indeterminate alcohol interesting I don't know how I feel about this. This is really interesting. There is like a brightness that I'm getting. It's it's like a fake sour, yeah. if yeah. I had to describe yeah. it. And it's like where sour to me is usually existing like really like on my tongue. Yeah. This is like in the upper back of yep. my mouth. It's this almost is. like when I drink pineapple juice, I get a feeling in that area. Yeah, this is way back there. It's like, like it's interesting. It's almost and I don't mean this in a bad way. I mean this more in like an off kilter kind of way. It's almost a little nauseating, the flavor combo that's there. It's like, it really, I feel like it wants to be sweet, yeah. but it's not quite sweet. And it wants to be almost floral. And it's kind of got that. But it is very interesting. I think probably, I wonder if there's a little bit of like, the olive brine that's existing in there that kind of maybe dripped in yeah. mixed with the rest uh, of it. So try the one that has mm. less olive in it because that one is much better. Yeah, wow. Well, yeah, it is. That's really different. Yeah. Hmm. I that's think... definitely more, it's more, this is actually nice because we have, let's see, two ounces of chartreuse yeah. and a single ounce of maraschino. And I feel like, 
in this ratio, it's a lot more, they play nicer with each other yeah. in, this, in this way. Yeah, I like the, the the one that has all the olive like floating in it because I think it does need that like salinity. Mm -hmm. And it makes it really different too. I actually, I, I like, I like it. I do like it. But there is like a piece of me that's like gut feeling that says like, you should not like this. But I want yeah. to like it. Yeah, I would, I would never like order that at a bar. Mm -hmm. I would certainly, I, I still stand by the whole, like, I wouldn't even call this like a, like, yeah. even aesthetically, this does not feel like a Negroni. No. Does not feel like There's a martini. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you got the olive stuff in there, so right. that's, that's more martini enough for me. Right. Excuse me. Oh man, that chartreuse. Yeah, yeah, it's really, it's really hitting me. Yeah. It's the, oh, it's the, it's the 110 proof of the yeah. chartreuse that's really, uh, yeah. Whew. It's not the, the collar, you know. It's not the five ounces of no, uh, certainly not. liquor you just poured. Oh my gosh! And the, yeah, that's all spirit. Yeah, like that is all strong spirit. Like chartreuse, green chartreuse, clocking in at 110. The beef eater clocking in at 88 proof, and then Luxardo is probably like what 30 percent or something, 30 something. I think it's gonna be higher. Where than are it's you? up there. Up there. 32, so yeah, we got 64 yeah. proof there. But it's all like nothing in this cup. This is more than like a quarter percent alcohol. So yeah. when it when it knocks at the door, it's a yeah. it's using the knocker. It's, it's really making its presence. Assertive known. thump thump. Uh, Absolutely. I'm yeah. actually now I'm really interested to take one of these like cocktail chartreuse like olives. Because I love olives. I've never had the thought of an olive being sweet. I've been eating olives, black olives, green olives for most of my life, and I love olives, yeah. but I don't think I've ever had a sweet right. olive before. It's that nudges on it, yeah. It does. It's it's different. Yeah. It's different. It's definitely not something that I would like like expect in any universe. It's, it's all right. Yeah. So I can't tell, like, from the picture, like, mm -hmm. did, um, did uh, John Ray uh, use, nope, those are not Kalamata olives, so, mm -hmm. like, they These are, are they look they're like, just, they're like, bougie, like, like, mm -hmm. like what we're seeing in uh, the picture over yeah. here, and I guess we'll switch the angle just for a second, just so we can take a look, and maybe you can see what we see over here, of, like, this is what the picture I have as references. Mm -hmm. Those, those green olives kind of look more like the, you know, the olives that we have. Yeah. Hello there. Uh, but they're a little more they're a little more pruned, so maybe they've been like sitting in the in brine something. longer, yeah. or maybe, like kind of aging a little bit, like as opposed to something yeah. you know that I just literally got from the store the other day. Yeah. Also, like uh, their drink is less pretty. Mm -hmm. Like I think ours is, is ours is more clear. I yeah. think it's like, like their drink is it's it's bubbled. Yeah. It has like bubbles and like you can definitely see like the olive oil. Right. Like on top of that which to be honest there's not there's, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of oil on ours yeah it's I mean, like it's not very purple at all i mean it's weird because like i kind of want to take a tiny bit of that and pour it in here oh and yeah and uh like let's uh like put a little more brine in there yeah yeah let's get let's grab the other bits of the we'll yeah. make this we'll make a dirty no let's, let's make this dirty see what happens Just, let's put a little bit of a little little splash uh, of put it. a little more in there a little bit more there we go. There we go. A couple of splashes of yeah. some extra olive brine to see what exactly happens. I feel like, because I feel if you're going to take an olive right. and you're going to add that to this, like it, it, it feels like a pretty bold statement. You don't do that haphazardly and expect that just to work. Like there's something else here that has to be explored. Yep. That is delicious. I'm real mad about that. Oh, that is completely different. I'm so, oh, that is much better. I am so better. upset. That's much better than it previously. <laughs> wow. I am so mad. That is that is like when I first took the sip, I yeah. was like, there is something off yeah. here. And I, I, I don't know. I, I, I want to boost my ego and say uh -huh. it's, it's finally that bartender's right. intuition, like yeah. finally forming. But like there was something missing mm -hmm. and it was like, because we only got like the, the solidity yeah. was teased. A yeah, little bit. yeah. But now adding it specifically to it, that that, that vinegary yeah. saltiness is yeah. perfect there. Now it's it like, makes sense. It's like, because there was a piece of that was almost candy-like to me, and tasting that, I'm like saltwater taffy. Yeah. That's what's yeah. going on there, really. Yeah. This is also like, 
you'll drink one of those and then immediately be sick. Right. One because it's five ounces of liquor. Mm-hmm. Uh, Took the whole whole thing down. But you're gonna need like another like ounce of pickle, like pickle brine or mm-hmm. olive brine to like drive that. But exactly. That's crazy. Like that's what that's missing. Like is like the oil we can see. Yeah, we had to use a little bit more context clues. See, yeah. This was yeah. so. I, I saw this and I was like, this is weird. <clears throat> There had to be more here. Yeah. And of course, with the, when you when you combine two brains together, mm-hmm. there's at the very least another set of eyes on it yeah. to see what we might be missing there. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, because I'm like, I would go out and like get something that's like, oh, yeah, I don't like this. And then I would just like leave it. And it's like, who knew that like... And a little bit more juice to it. Because like, I don't drink dirty martinis anymore. That was a very like, I'm in my 20s kind of like attitude. I feel like you were t- like, you, you got to try to like, if you order that out, you're like, you're trying to make a statement about something or an impression on somebody. I'm adding a little bit more to the yeah. glass we have here. I feel like it's just like, got it. Yeah. This is actually like, the transformation on that is so drastic. I really like that. Uh, yeah, now. I don't understand it. Uh, but yeah, like now, now I kind of understand. Like, I want to make a dirty martini. But I almost wonder if it's like, do vodka instead of gin. Mm hmm. And then it's just a vodka, olive juice, and like a right. little bit of green instead of your vermouth. Mm-hmm. And I feel like now that I, I, I'm even thinking now, I took a sip of it a second time after putting some more of the olive brine into it. And now, like previously, the maraschino was very prevalent to me, even though it was half, like half a part as right. before. Now, the marash, I'm um, sorry, the chartreuse right. is very prevalent to yeah. me. So it is very clearly changing over time maybe not as much because like you know it's not like it's going to dilute because it has no ice in it but as it warms up i'm sure some of those more saltier flavors are going to kind of come to the forefront and i mean also the sweet flavors too yeah that is like chartreuse olive like all Mm -hmm. the way through now like luxarder and gin are there like they get you through the initial bit uh like to where the interesting thing to me is is like i've got like not like like I have a weird thing about olives. Like, mm-hmm. I yeah. like them. Like, uh, like I will eat them, but like I always make a face because like there's a bitter yeah. like thing that hits like the back of my tongue for sure. Uh, like, like the, the the greenery like in the chartreuse sneaks in. Now they're mm-hmm. like fancy olives. Yeah, uh, and it feels okay. Um, the unfortunate thing about doing like brined olives is that they're brined in a bunch of salt. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like my buddies me like, oh yeah, like you, you can drink some of this. Right, exactly. But then if you, you go too far, but then you will like, die. You know, because yeah, I mean, if we were imagine ourselves as sailors upon the seas, and if what we were looking for is the brine, and we yeah. take too much, we we uh, indulge in the briny deep too much, mm-hmm. um, seasickness, I guess, uh, and very, very, uh, very tumultuous seas ahead. Natural. So mad. That is so good. This is I'm like so mad. I came to a very similar conclusion when I tried like a really like well mixed mm-hmm. dirty martini mm-hmm. for the first time. Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't think it should be this good, but it really is. Like even imagining cocktails out there, like for example, like a pickleback where you use like pickle brine as like basically your chaser and mix it yeah. with like I think that's like with whiskey or bourbon. Yeah. Um, but like when you hear that, mm-hmm. you don't know how. I right. don't know why it's gonna work. Why would people even order that? But like, if it's, I feel, feel like it comes down to the ratio. Like, obviously, with a little less of the olive brine, mm. it doesn't make sense. But adding a little bit more to it, mm. it starts to come up to a level. I'm sure there'll be a point. Like, if we keep on increasing the level of brine, mm-hmm. like eventually it's gonna completely overpower yeah. everything else. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird, right? Like, I'm thinking, like, oh man, like we have that like green and tonic over there, like right. right. I need like green and tonic and like a splash of olive juice. Like I want to crack. Like, this like code. I wonder now, right? Like, I want to crack this code about like. There's a there's a saltiness and yeah. there's a sweetness and there's a botanical yeah. bitterness and there's also like a slight sourness there. Like there's there are flavors. Yeah, yeah. There are definitely there flavors. are many flavors. That's, that's awesome. That yeah. is flavor and glass. Yeah, that's great. In the most interesting way possible. So that's our Negronatini, which I'm actually I'm uh, I'm very happy that we made this, this discovery. Yeah, it uh, feels it feels like this is like like evidently the rays were onto something right, here. Yeah. Evidently, uh, yeah, I learned a lot about my drinking in general just from like fixing this, mm-hmm. like or at least nudging it like you in are a better direction. Mixologist, I, I I play one on uh, Twitch. There we go. Uh, yeah, I like that. Um, Coolio. I didn't. I, I never would have thought that existed. I think it's misnamed. 
I would agree with that. Yeah. It definitely doesn't feel like, like I don't like to be honest, I don't know what else to call it. I mean, I'd even call that like a like a Ray's martini. Yeah. Evidently, like the Ray family got was yeah. onto something yeah. and you can call it a martini. It's got it's got gin in it. Yeah. It's got yeah. some chartreuse in it. You can call it a martini. Sure, yeah. The yeah. Ray's martini. Yeah. It's good. AKA in the Negronatini. Mm. And I remember specifically being confused, like very confused yeah. when I found this and Googling like Negroni plus martini. And trying to see if like there was there was some other stuff out like some other reference out there where I could get like a better representation of what this drink is. Right. This is the only one. Yeah. This is the only one that I could find. So hey, you know what? A little diamond in the rough. Yeah. That we're finding yeah. here. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Thanks, thanks Rachel. Thanks, Rachel. Yeah. Thank you, guys. It's apparently his favorite. Adapted from apparently this was adapted from a Fulton restaurant, uh, the Fulton restaurant in New York City. Okay. And it calls the cocktail truly delicious. And it goes great with her shrimp parm. Mm. Mm. I could see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I could yeah. see that. Totally. Again, like you want more of that of the sea. Mm -hmm. um, it really does. The, it is. It is very. Like we had the ocean. We had oysters last night, and like I could see. I that, could totally like, see that now. Playing. Yeah. With, but they would need to be like much like mm. more like salinity. Like yeah, uh, much more briny. Like Aaron and I were in. Um, DC a couple weeks ago and like we went to like some random place that had oysters for half price for happy hour. Oh, nice. And like we got them, uh, they came out, they were the, like, the grossest, like nastiest looking oysters I've ever seen. Oh my uh, goodness. But they were very like briny, mm -hmm. like, it's like, that's what I want. Like I want all that like salt water, yeah. like, yeah. like fish funk. I like I'm I'm a huge fan of fish as well, and yeah. I feel like I don't walk into an oyster situation like a clam situation yeah. and like 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 cringe at the idea right. of salinity right. or even a little bit of, even a little bit of sand particles, mm. some texture there. Yeah. Like that's like what I'm that's what yeah. I'm going for. Yeah, and that like now it makes sense. Like we went to like some fancy restaurant and like we had a cocktail there. Mm -hmm. We changed and made it better, and instead of it being, you know, this like, is the journey that we embark upon. Like fruit of tomorrow, like we're serving with it, like it's Rachel Ray's, uh, like shrimp uh, right? a la pasta. Like, exactly. That's great. Yeah. This is like it's a. Th these are the time. I mean, this is another great example of something that you know it hits you in a way that you're not expecting, and mm -hmm. it kind of takes you to s another place entirely. Yeah. Because you have you have no choice otherwise. Because this doesn't fit. This does not fit. No, it the doesn't. The aesthetic that I'm in right now. Yeah. And some cocktails can really take me yeah. away. And this one, surprisingly so. Yeah, yeah. Has done and put the bill. Yeah, I did not know what that was going to taste like. Because um, I could not sure. put it together in my head, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, I think that's an excellent segue. So I feel ooh. really, I feel this is really, really hopeful, actually. Yeah. This was, would you call this weird? Yes, absolutely. Pretty weird? Yeah, But like, weird. oddly satisfying? Uh, yeah, they were, it was slimy yet satisfying. Indeed. Yeah. And so there was another one that I found. Uh oh. Equally is kind of like, huh, I guess you could put those things together. And that'll be our next cocktail of the evening. And hopefully I'm flipping in the right direction mm. for it. Well, I'm definitely gonna, I'm not. Gonna put some things. Uh, Absolutely. In we'll the do bucket. a little bit of cleanup yeah. over there. Do a little tidying. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll fill you up on a little bit more water over here. <laughs> Glad to know that everybody is very much getting their hydration and stuff. Uh, after that, like my body's like, yeah. By the way, like, you <laughs> like desperately, you definitely need some hydration, you, you know. Drink just water. Yeah, no, specifically yeah, after man. this, and I was like, whoa, hold on a second. Yeah. I will definitely ask to anybody else watching along at home. This is we're exploring a lot of really interesting aspects of chartreuse here. This is my first time having any cocktails mm -hmm. with chartreuse in it, and Brad's had a bit more experience than mm -hmm. I am. Cause he's older, you know. Maybe. Uh, I don't, maybe, I don't maybe, know who said that. But I'm wondering if there's any, like, what's your favorite way to use, like, chartreuse? Yellow or green? green. Or, or that VEP. VEP. Yeah. Like, do maybe you have that 80-year-old bottle under your maybe. bar. Yeah. Dude, if, so, if somebody out there has those, like, those other, like, vintage type of uh, chartreuse bottles, right. like, is it worth it? Yeah. Should we be paying more money for that? Like, should this be like a, like a, an investment that we wind up making? Yeah. I have to know. The expensive yellow that I had like is probably three times better than like that yellow. So like, yeah, at least for some things, yes, it's true. Um, and I feel like I mean that's like the whole like I mean I feel like sometimes I'm like this is a question for the Somaliers, right. and this is not something that a, that a layman like myself right. should be should be like indulging in. But sometimes mm -hmm. we get a little piece. Right. The high grade, a little bit. piece yeah. of heaven up there, mm. and it's good. And so it was good. And so, and it, shall so it shall be good. 
And so we'll move on to something a little, also a little different. We're, yeah. we're taking things and we're we're trying to we're taking these chartreuse yeah. bottles and we're trying to see exactly mm-hmm. how how like, like the chartreuse is undeniably a wonderful liqueur. Mm-hmm. Like right. it, time and time again, so far it has been shown that it mixes well with a variety of different things. Right. And now I wonder what yeah. we'll be able to go through uh, next. Ooh, nice call on the yeah. the coaster. Yeah. I've, I've been here for a, an hour I'm learning how it all works. You're a fast learner, bro. Don't put things on the bar and make a water ring, bro. To be fair, yeah. I eventually, I actually do need to like at some point like like um, what's what's the term where you like. You put another like. Oh, yeah, you, you, there's you, a word for you, that. You, you like refinish this, like exactly. varnish it's it. A, it's, right. it's, you put a nice like varnish on it or something. You put just one uh, giant coaster on there. Exactly. The whole bar could be a rubber mat. It could. Yeah. It could just all be the rubber <laughs> yeah. mat, honestly. But so moving on to something a little bit, uh, a little bit different. There is there is a book that I found. Uh, I don't actually yeah. own it yet, but it's popped up recently, and it's called Saved by the Bellini. Okay. And it is a book that is inspired by the cocktails of like the maybe not the cocktails from the '90s, but themes of okay. the '90s and things that happened like in basically around the turn, you know, turn of the century. Mm-hmm. And so one of the things that pops up is so we just experienced a um, a Negronatini. Yeah. We had a little bit of olive brine in there. We yeah. had a little bit of salt. <laughs> and another substance that evokes that feeling of saltiness is quenching your electrolytes. Okay. Specifically. Specifically, I'll reach into my cooler of doom for a Gatorade bottle. Okay. So this next cocktail is called the Side Snap Thirst Quencher, and I found this uh, this um, recipe on bonappetit.com, but it is featured in a book called Saved by the Bellini, who is by somebody, and I do not have and I do not have the reference here. Mm-hmm. However. Ever. They're awesome, and there's a Find bunch of them on stuff. Amazon, or, Find them or, on Amazon or your local bookseller. Exactly, yeah. I'm like constantly going into. I found the other day that there's a local bookstore that I'll go into, and and um, I walked in, and I go to a very specific part of the store. I take a look, and then I walk out, and I'm like, "You're, you know, what do you, what do you usually yeah. come here looking for?" I'm like, "I'm looking for cocktail books, yeah. actually." I'm like, you might be the only person that we know of that mm. goes to that section. It's huh. it's a single right. bookshelf. And uh, I usually don't find like really up and up and new stuff like this, right. but every once in a while, like. We'll find a hot number or something. Yeah. So our side snap. Oh, let me let me write this on the board first. Oh, everybody, yeah. everybody knows what's going on. The side snap thirst quencher, which utilizes <laughs> the truce, obviously. Side snap. I just assume that it's going to use green because everything uses green. I love to be able to turn to turn the expectations around. Oh, it's actually not green. Oh. It's yellow in this case. Well, I like that. Although, it's interesting to think like, I don't know, it's definitely the yellow here. The um, the reference image that I have almost makes it look like there's green and yellow in there, Ooh. but it is it is just the two. So, the story goes a little something like this. Okay. Um, I believe it is the the author of the book who wrote this article as well. And so they were they work in like a fancy like neo speakeasy and they worked there back in 2008 and they are the kind of speakeasy where like with the the, the bartenders will go into meetings every once in a while right. and they will have these little round tables where like we need to update our cocktail menu we have to mm. brainstorm things right. and there are certain like un like ingredients that are unspoken like you do not put them in cocktails right. like you don't just because like they evoke, I guess, a certain air or class mm. about them that just like if you're in a sure. high, at your high end bar, like you're not going to use that. One in, uh, spirit in particular, like blue curacao, is oh yeah, it's orange, yeah, but it's also blue. But why wouldn't you use something that's a little more like you know a little more like true to reality, true to yeah. reality? And so they like um, the the author was saying mm. that at one time I think while they were talking they were able to get like a like a, like a blue curacao right. cocktail into the menu and it worked out pretty well. And the inspiration for that was thinking about what other ingredients are like you, unspokenly. Like you wouldn't put that into like a a high end cocktail, right? And the idea came from kind of thinking of that whole like salty component of drinks mm-hmm. and combining with the sweet component of drinks, and it goes to the whole like mm-hmm. little history of like there was a chemist who decided one day that you can take some electro take the salt, split it apart, put it into for some fruit juice, mm-hmm. and it's a great drink for people to replenish like their energy and right. stuff because. The body needs ions in order to function. If you don't got ions, like your muscles aren't moving, mm-hmm. 
And so taking that inspiration and putting it into a cocktail, yeah. evidently they reached for one bottle and then another bottle and combined the two together. It's another two ingredient Ooh. cocktail. But instead of, let's say, your tonic in this case, you got Gatorade. Okay. So, and this was something I saw just like, uh, you know, because I, I've been trying to keep up with the Saved by, Bellini, by the Bellini thing. Yeah. And I thought, this is this is good. Another friend of mine uh, actually brought up that there was a, I think a a cocktail inspired by pizza. Like okay. you would, I don't, I don't remember any details about it. I've had a pizza Negroni. No uh, kidding, yeah, actually. There's, there's a restaurant in uh, New York, or in Las Vegas, called Super Freak Out. Oh, nice. Uh, and they have a Negroni menu, and one of theirs is like, we have a pizza Negroni, and it it tastes like <laughs> a Negroni, like if you were making like a like a margarita pizza, but wow, it being cool. a margarita pizza, it was mm -hmm. a Negroni pizza. Nice, uh, nice. Like it's all that like pizza spice. And I was like, this is the weirdest. Like, what was the name ready. of that restaurant? Uh, it's called down. Super Frico. Super Frico and their pizza Negroni. Their pizza Negroni uh, and is great. And every time we go there, we go to Super Frico because it's one of those dinner and a show places. Super Freak, Super Freak, uh, Super Frico. So not to get too far, uh, it's called Super Frico mm -hmm. because uh, like when you're making like Italian food, like in a skillet, and sometimes like the cheese falls off and like mm. lands on the pan like on the and gets all and crispy and, and yeah. like delicious. Uh, it's Frico. Oh, that's Frico. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. I'm yeah. learning more Italian and then, words. And then Super Freak. Yeah. Super Frico. Yeah. There yeah. You go. It's not a good like John Ray story where he came up with the uh, Negronatini, but indeed, yeah, indeed. There you go. But it's a little, you know, it's got its it's got its own area. Yeah. So is it specifically like Gatorade So it is blue? specifically blue Gatorade. Okay. Now, according to the recommendation here, uh, the author utilized the fierce blue cherry flavor of Gatorade. However, any blue Gatorade that you use uh, will apparently work. We've got cool, cool blue. blue, thirst quencher, yeah. which makes sense because this is the side snap thirst quencher. Oh, well, but yeah. I think all Gatorades are pretty much thirst mm -hmm. quenching in their own way. Mm -hmm. And essentially all we're going to do is we're going to combine four and a half ounces of our, our Gatorade, mm -hmm. which is a metric value that I'll let the calculator do. Yeah. And an ounce and a half, or about 44 milliliters, okay. of our yellow chartreuse. So we'll grab, let's see. You want to shake this? Or let's shake, wanna... We'll shake this up. All right. We got, I got two more shakers down there. I recently bought more. I realized more people coming around we need more so much time like uh, cleaning off the glasses and stuff. Actually, when we were out the other day, I was specifically impressed by the bartender cleaning off all of the oh, shakers yeah. and the uh, everything that they were using, yeah. like in between the cocktails they were making. It was very, very impressive. Yeah, uh, it's uh, a sign of a good bar whenever they uh, like take your drink or they go to make it and they don't just grab something and go. They smell it, and they're like, "Well, yeah." Because I have definitely gone to places, and like it's places that we like. Uh, oh yeah, like, they have a certain like grodiness to them yeah. that you kind of appreciate. Yeah. We've gone to nice places that we like there back we home, um, but we go there enough, so like we're friends with everybody. So like, I'll get like a like a martini or a Negroni or something, mm -hmm. and they'll make it, and I'll bring it back, and I'll be like, I'm "Like, did you make like a like the tequila drink on the menu and like the before this?" Like, they're like, "Yeah." It's like, "Yeah, this tastes like tequila." I'm like, can I take it back? Yeah. All right, so we'll grab, we'll grab our jigger over here. And so first we'll add our blue Gatorade. We're gonna add four and a half ounces of this it. This might so. be a little eyeball-y. No, it's chill. But we'll eyeball the other one too, so it'll be fine. Indeed, so es essentially what we're doing is, let's see. Two big we, ones. If we do the math here, we've got, let's see, so four we'll and a half times we'll, two, we'll nine two times big two ones. Is three, so like, there's a fraction here. Yeah, so yeah. that's two. Two of, the, two of the big ones, there that's we go. Two. That's one. Uno. And we'll add the other one, and then we'll take half of the half other side. Of, exactly. There we go. That's two. Nice and easy. And then we'll do. And we'll take our chartreuse in the background. Roughly. Beautiful. That feels halfish. There we go. If we're wrong on this side, we'll also be wrong on the uh, exactly. chartreuse side. So we got one and a half ounces on this side. So I'll take. I see a little. You know how chartreuse yeah. has a very specific smell. Yes. Uh, so too does the yeah. blue Gatorade. I agree with that. And like complimentary smells. Yeah, I feel like, so smelling, when I think of a Gatorade, like I, it didn't click with me until I was older yeah. that Gatorade is a mm. little salty. Yeah. There was always a different side of mm -hmm. like, I guess the drink itself that was like something that I couldn't quite describe at the time. And then like drinking like salt water when I'm sick and stuff just to like, you know, make my throat feel a little bit better. I was like, oh. Gatorade? That doesn't make sense to me. 
Uh, I cheated and smell. This is a uh, wild smell. Yeah, yeah. Well, I feel like there's a, there's a lot going on with chartreuse, and combining that with something like Gatorade, which is... I don't know if it's a very complex flavor. I mean, I don't know exactly how to describe cool blue on its own. It tastes blue. It tastes blue, exactly. And it quenches my thirst. That's the type of, like, energy that apparently is being mixed with our chartreuse. I'm very mad because I think this is going to be very good. I feel like it will be. And we're going to fill, put that into, they call for a red plastic cup. But I think we're just going to grab any of the taller containers over there and I'll pop a couple of ice cubes in it, chill it, make it feel like a fresh... Ooh. So you got any of the taller glasses over on the little table on the left-hand side. I, I almost want to use a, uh, like, uh, like, mason jar, but... Ooh. You know what might also be okay? Eh. Grab the... Yeah, yeah, this is what I want. We'll go for it. That's what I want. You got in the deep... I don't even know what kind of glass you would call this. It's one of those, like, college... It's uh... almost like hurricane kind yeah, of? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll add a couple of glasses of this. What did I say? Glasses? I meant ice. Nice, yeah. Yeah. A couple of cubies. Indeed. We'll bring the cocktail angle over here oh, as well. Yeah. And we'll just kind of... We're going to see what happens with this. There we go. Hello, everybody. I'm going to bring you down just a little bit. I kind of want to see the color on this guy, so I'll tilt it up Perfect. just a tad. There we go. By the way, I also realized the other day that apparently this phone doesn't always like to focus, so eventually that will be something we work through, but in the meantime, <laughs> not really. Let me grab one of my strainers. This is my favorite one. I should get more of it. Mm. Our side snap thirst quencher, it is... Blue. Ish green? Yeah. That looks very 90s. That, yeah. Wow, for like, I think from our perspective, it's a lot more green than it looks on the screen. Oh, yeah. That is so blue looking. Yeah, that's. Wow. Must want to like stand in front of all the lights to. Uh, Indeed. To now, hide supposedly, that. I see this garnished with an orange wedge. I did not catch that the first time, so I think I'm gonna take. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm inclined to take a little, mm. a little le le lemon wedge. Yeah. And we'll try that. You can hand me the knife. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna slightly do this on the little rubber yeah. over here. Well, yeah, I'm gonna uh, take some of my garbage and put it over here. There we go. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Many hands make light work. It's true. It's true. As more as uh, as more guests come on, I realize that uh, you know having a little bit of help is a uh, is very, a good very thing. Appreciated. Yeah, absolutely. Give a little. There we go. A little boop, pop boop. that over here. There we go. Hello, thirst quencher. Wow. Welcome to the party. There we go. Take you in a little. Whoa. Let me clean my mess up. We may or may not use more uh, lemons in the future. You can go back over there. Yeah. I'm just going to slyly put you guys back together, and the, the witch can go over there. Mm. And give us a little picture from, from our angle. Our angle, yeah. It definitely looks like very, like, sea green from over here. Hmm. That is delicious looking. You can uh, exclamation discord to, like, go see that picture. Absolutely. Like, so After the stream. Taking all this stuff, what I wind up doing is we'll put a little, got a little cocktail blog over the discord in the, uh, every single week we'll take some, I'll wind up going through back everything and shake out our, uh, our tasting notes and a little bit of thoughts on it, maybe a little story behind it as well. Basically whatever, just to, just to provide more context on the cocktail instead of, maybe this, because I mean, I'll admit, when you're making cocktails, and I mean, I don't expect anybody out there to sit through a cocktail stream for anywhere between two to three and a half hours at a time. You should. You should. Yeah, yeah, totally. Should. Absolutely. Because it's, we, we demand it. Nothing uh, like yeah. being there yeah. live and being able to participate in stuff. But after the fact, like, you know, I admit it's a lot of work. So we, yeah. I put in the work for you guys. You would put the put in the cocktail yeah. like you look at the pictures, look at a little like a. Mm -hmm. I don't do any ratings though. I don't rate things like mm -hmm. on like a scale from like zero to five or zero right. to ten or anything. It's like I don't know. There's so much more than just a number. Yeah. So we have our thirst quencher. It is quite literally just blue Gatorade. Any blue Gatorade will do. This one right. is the cool blue thirst quencher version. Not uh, a sponsor. With, not totally not a sponsor. And we have chartreuse, also totally not a sponsor. Although that would, <laughs> that would, be, that would be pretty sweet. So this guy, I'm going to specifically not put my nose in the lemon peel. Ooh. It smells awesome. Wow. Dude, you have to give that a smell. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get away from the... That's like, that's so candy. 
That's like yeah. a, that's like a candy uh, that I know, but can't yeah. quite place my finger that is on. Not a Jolly Rancher, but oh, it's, it's like it's like a Happy Rancher, gum, like a gummy worm. Yeah, there's like a gummy worm, like blue, like blue gummy worm flavor. Yeah. I'm very excited about this. Oh my god. Yeah. Wow. That's like a really, really good like gummy bear, gummy worm. That's like that's like gummy bear. Oh, that's weird. There is yeah. definitely like that is almost hitting me like like almost like a mix between like the coconut mm -hmm. or like blue raspberry. Just just like yeah. if gummy if fruit gummy bear had a taste right that's what that's yeah. what's in the glass that's incredible uh yeah i mean we talk about like yellow having that's like, sort of like that sweet, sweet note. To, note to it the the more like this is actually a really great example of like so it's a two two ingredient cocktail yeah. chartreuse is blending yeah with the gatorade or maybe like the gatorade is completely overpowering the chartreuse mm -hmm. but the chartreuse just doesn't want to go away it wants to stick around i'm actually i have to know i right i feel like like i wonder if it's just the taste of the gatorade it's not just the smell of the gatorade because i don't like that mm -hmm. like thirst yeah, quenched yeah. that's yeah no that is yeah, not a... that's that's got kind of a trashy smell <laughs> not like in a in a bad way but yeah it's been completely transformed like that, I, I mean, that flavor is kind of maybe almost a little like blue raspberry-ish. Yeah, I was gonna say like, this is like the platonic the ideal of blue raspberry, good. right? Mm -hmm. So you want it to be, uh, but that does not smell great. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, I mean, I feel like- It tastes you know, fine. I never, I never go for a Gatorade like after a run or something right. and think like, I am in this for the flavor. Right, like, yeah. you know, I'm in it because there is a utility that I'm trying to get out of this bottle that I really can't get anywhere else. Right, I need salt mm -hmm. and I need electrolytes. Uh, this is just really, this is cool. Yeah. This is cool to look at, to think that this combination has that power. That's so, that's so good. What's weird is like it, I think this is like a college drink, right? Like yeah. this is like you're walking up and down like the main drag and like insert your town. Oh, like, for sure. Insert your state. I could honestly imagine like taking, taking a little bit of this. So like the, the fraternity drink in my life mm -hmm. was this Lynchburg lemonade where you'd essentially okay. take some Sprite, take yeah. some lemonade mix and you take a spirit of your choice, right. either Everclear was always a favorite, right. but usually a bit of vodka, depending on how crazy things are getting. And like, it just had a particular taste to it. Yeah. And I would say that in another parallel line of thoughts, mm -hmm. that's kind of reminds me of this. Certainly yeah. not, certainly yeah. not as uh, like boozy, yeah. Yeah. obviously, yeah. but it is very, it is sweet. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a gummy bear. It mm -hmm. reminds me of those more, just like sporty days. Right. It is a very sporty cocktail. And I have to think like, if you were, let's say, if you were a part of an organization and yeah. this was like your juice of choice, uh -huh. like somebody's, somebody's got money yeah, to I mean, put an entire yeah. bottle of chartreuse with an entire like, I mean, I imagine a very interesting idea for like a party idea would be to get like one of those big Gatorade yeah. canisters, fill the whole thing with, up with ice, put like, I don't know. I wonder if this would be even a little bit different with just taking like blue Gatorade from like, let's say Gatorade powder. Right. Oh. Making it into something blue and then combining yeah. that with the yellow chartreuse. Because the other piece of this is like, you can mix this, at least according to the recipe, with mm. any other blue yeah. Gatorade. So what it'll taste like depending on what Gatorade you have in your local area mm. might be a little bit different. What's interesting is like, the sweetness that comes from it, like my brain wanted to lock on to. I'm gonna ruin. I'm gonna ruin a taste thing for you, maybe. Right. Uh, caramel. Mmm. Like, I can see that. Um, yeah. But like what I definitely want to do is I want to take well, this oh. and I want to. Uh, I'm gonna throw it in like one of those like slush puppy machines. Yeah, I can understand. And that. like make like you a, know, like a that, Slurpee out of that. It. Note of the Slurpee yeah. is it's it's oh my god it's like combining the there is a blue Slurpee mm -hmm. 
and there is there are other Slurpees. Yes. But like this, this definitely includes mm. that. Now I'm thinking like, what if you take a blue Slurpee, right? Mm. And you just put yellow chartreuse. Yeah. Into yeah. It. Like, is it gonna taste amazing? Like, I feel like. I don't know if you could take like, that. Could be a whole thing. Yeah. Just taking in a bunch of Slurpees and just putting a bunch of alcohol in them. Can you take that could be and so it up? fun. Yeah. And of course you can. Yeah, yeah. Evidently, like I'm, I'm now thinking like, well, if Gatorade X and you know Botanical Spirit Y right. go together so well, like, where's the limit there? Is yeah. there a limit? There is no limit. Like only evi- our own hubris. Is now, our now what's going to happen is throughout my life going forward, because of the, this cocktail is going to change my life. I'm going to wind up taking, like, when I go on, like, trips and stuff and I take my liqueur with me, yeah. oftentimes when I go on vacation with my family because I've become, like, mm-hmm. the local mixologist, right. I'll take I'll take my bottles and stuff with me, and now we're going to stop at a rest stop yeah. and I'm going to pick up a random, like, Gatorade flavor, like, right. Mountain Dew flavor or some other energy drink and be like, please excuse me for a moment, yeah. like, pop this bottle of liqueur yeah. and I'll put this in and take see whether or not it still tastes good. Yeah, uh... I, want, I gotta wonder. I'm, I'm so curious. Like, also, like, if I do the math right, like, this ends up being like nine or ten percent alcohol. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, this is a approachable like porch sipper. It is. You're right. Uh, and now, like, this is a little far afield. But, like, we were um, somewhere recently, and it was like uh, mm-hmm. we've got like on our menu all of our cocktails. Also, would you like uh, like Fernet and a Coke? And I oh, think yeah. it was not mm-hmm. like Fernet and Coke, like a rum and Coke would be. It was just here's some Fernet, here's some here, Coke, here's a glass. You combine of Coke. them at your own, yeah. at your own pace, or you just like you know like yeah. counterbalance yeah. the bitter and sweet, um, like which is what this is doing. Like, Essentially, yeah. Yeah, uh, this isn't bitter; it's herbal. But mm-hmm. like here is like corn syrup in a uh, in a plastic cup mm-hmm. with salt and stuff, yeah, and other fruit flavor yeah, of, like, of unknown. Who origin. knew? Who knew? Yeah. Could it be that possibly the combination of blue Gatorade mm-hmm. and yellow chartreuse or other chartreuse mm-hmm. could be something so, like, neon delicious? Yeah. Also, like, isn't a natural color, but is such a pretty drink. Yeah. Right. This is very much like the, uh, the the one cup design. Yeah. With, like, the kind of the green, the blue, purple. Oh, yeah. Thing. Like, it's, it's, it's that. This is like, if there is, like, the trifecta mm-hmm. of colors that represent that era yeah this is one of this is one of the keys to yeah. unlock the 90s yet again somebody had like a like plastic jacket like with that color pattern on it exactly like, like exactly. those like retro like diner like plastic yeah. cups. yeah uh the lemon is an interesting like garnish because i think it's only there for mm-hmm. aesthetics yeah uh, and, and to be fair i think it should be an orange yeah but but, but, but it's, it's citrus nonetheless it's just kind of like the, I feel like it's just there yeah. to remind you that like this is this is not some like portal to another world. Right. Like, this is this is this is a cocktail. Yeah. We yeah. should we should at least try to respect it as yeah. such. Also, I think this is the right like glassware for it. Like this, it is very much so. It's remind yeah. it like it reminds me of like the like the summer pool. Yeah. You know, like that that era of just like I'm gonna walk to the local pool right. like from my from my house down the road and just like stick my feet in. Exactly. It's just it's that it's that vibe. Drink my Gatorade. Mm-hmm. And it's just like it's just like green enough to be like, oh well maybe this is like an ocean pool. Yeah. Because it's also got like the salt and stuff. Yeah. That's that's surprising. Interesting to think that so far of the cocktails that we've seen that are kind of like kind of out there, out mm-hmm. there, like didn't think that it was going to be like a very, like maybe, maybe even like a good combination of the chartreuse. It's it's been good so far. Like there, I, there hasn't been like a combination of chartreuse so far that I'm like, no. If I had to pick one in particular, I feel like it's the last word that I'm like. This one feels like the least approachable one mm-hmm. comparatively. They are yeah. all amazingly approachable. But comparatively, mm. I mean, I guess like I think like mm. trying to remain as objective mm. as possible. The Alaska's probably like a little the least tasty one. on that, and then like immediately pivot your context. Because <laughs> mm. they do uh, like the yellow does similar yeah. things in both. Ooh. Actually, interestingly enough, taking a sip of that and then a sip of this. It's very, it's so, it's so very candy. Yeah. It's like very like gummy, gummy, like, um, one of those like, um, oh, yeah. Sour, like, well, not, 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 not happy. sour patch kids or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, not sour, like, like rainbow worm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they don't have the sour. Yeah. Like, yeah. I want more of that, like, 
This is very, it's it's acid, very yeah. refreshing. Very, very yeah. Also, I just want to point out that the uh, the last word is completely like changed to like yeah. There's an interesting pink like pink now. You got the pink on the bottom yeah. with the maraschino. I bet if we mixed it around a little bit, it's have like more like that pink hue to it. Oh man, evolving over time. Actually, now that we're thinking about, it, yeah. we've had we've had a number of cocktails yeah. so far, yeah. including drinking some chartreuse, green and yellow. Neat. Adding a little bit of mm. um, a little bit of uh, oh my god, what do you call it? Tonic, yeah. a little bit of tonic to it. Uh, we also had, uh, we made a last word cocktail. We also made an Alaska cocktail. Yeah. We made a Negronatini, mm. and this was the side snap thirst quencher. Mm. A little bit of a mouthful. Uh, the there. last word tastes like food. Oh, interesting. I, I don't know what has happened over the uh, like hour and change. Mm -hmm. But after having like sweet thing and like interesting like gin yeah. thing, that tastes like something you would eat for dinner. I don't know what that thing is. It's almost like it's almost like it gives me those like leftover vibes. Yeah. Like almost like the, like I took this almost as if I put my last word into the refrigerator and I came back later and I like reheated it and I was like, yeah, this definitely wasn't made today. Yeah. And it's like it's a little more lime juice forward now. Yeah. It's got a little more of that like kind of tartness. Yeah. Again, I like playing the game of like here's the things in my head. Um like a cherry turnover or like yeah. a cherry cake like it's it's bready which mm -hmm. is weird because that was i can there. see that i can see that it was not there an hour ago. yeah i'm almost yeah. getting like almost like shortcake vibes and i think it might just be the like cherries on top have just like, started to like you know just like have taken over into it have dominated the conversation. Mm -hmm. And I'm so curious about the um, the chartreuse oh, yeah. tonics now, because they're yeah. the, the ice is completely melted. Back, it's yeah. definitely come back up to temperature, and yeah. I'm curious to see like what what it is now. Well, the green is immediately pepper on the nose. Right. The yellow is... Honestly, I, I could almost imagine this being a Gatorade flavor. I have been completely thrown out of like where I was a couple hours ago yeah. because of this because yeah. of this game yeah, right? cocktail here. Uh, room temperature uh, uh, green like smells like pepper. Um, oh and, yeah. And might be like the way Very to, uh, cracked to pepper. do it. Huh. The yellow and tonic tastes a lot like warm tonic. Yeah, I think I think the this one's I think aged a bit better. Yeah, or aged I say kind of diluted a little bit better over time. This one is still very it's still very green chartreusey. It's very much that. Actually, I'm getting more of those pepper notes yeah. now. Yeah, which is kind of cool. It's definitely more it's more bitter now. Yes. than it was earlier, and I think that bitterness probably came from the chartreuse to begin with. Right, but the tonic is kind of like bringing it out a little mm -hmm. bit more. Just kind of like giving it a little more support to stick mm -hmm. around for a little longer. It's a little flatter. Mm -hmm. Like it's a lot warmer. Yeah. yeah. I'm very interested in all of this. I'm learning like so much. About oh, yeah. Like, because this is like not a thing that I can do at home. Like, I can't play with like cocktails and talk mm -hmm. to people about it. Cause, yeah. Like, when you're at home, like doing this on your own, like, mm -hmm. you won't make five drinks. Indeed. And, and indeed. think about them. Absolutely. Because um, you'll, you'll drink those five drinks yeah. and go to bed. And the really fun part is like when I have people on here now, which is happening more often right. now, like, it's really nice to like, just kind of have this opportunity to like you don't get to have those places to have like a playground with something yeah. that like i mean if you have a fully stocked kitchen at your disposal that's amazing right but i feel like a fully stocked bar at your disposal is harder to come by yeah. because it's a little bit it's a little more niche than just say like the cooking kitchen and stuff right. so this has been like Excellent. I feel like I don't take it. I don't take advantage as much right. of the opportunity to go through and just mix a bunch of things together mm -hmm. and experiment with mm -hmm. it. As more more often, do I have the people who are here that play around a little bit mm -hmm. more with it? And it's it's real. It's it's really cool to watch too, from like a like a my perspective. I see Meow just popping in saying hi. I like the haircut. Thank you so much. It's been well overdue. It also I, I had to yeah, match yeah, Brad's yeah. do over here. I do have like uh, that characteristic I mean, like kind of the tech guy vibe. Oh yeah. Uh, it's been like four months, like since I've gotten a haircut. <laughs> no, uh, this is this is four months. This is probably three months, maybe four. Yeah, I get it. That cut, is incredible. I get it cut real short, um, and then mm. like once it starts to hide, like my industrial. Uh, yeah, I see that. Yeah. I'm like, all right, I gotta get a haircut. I think once, once like, 
I don't know what my limit is. I just like I grew it out so like I'm so used to having my hair a lot longer, like right. like straight up like ponytail type style because yeah. that's how I grew up. And um, in, in my in my older years, like I like to use less product. Basically, as you've matured, I matured a little bit. The hair gets a little bit shorter. I gotta keep this little like one of my coworkers pointed mm. out the little tuft in the middle. Like yeah. that's, that can't go. I yeah. love my waves. I was gonna say there's like a very like like specific like uh, like Cameron style uh, and it is that little bit of like uh, like oh no like, of, it's like I oh did, no I didn't, what happened oh, I didn't comb my hair this morning I just felt like I this. just woke up and like, mm -hmm. I'm running out this you know get a coffee or whatever right oh uh, lucky me yeah. nine o'clock in the morning going out to this this um Starbucks <laughs> I was like yeah. good morning good morning to you yeah. oh, oh your coffee's on the house sir yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, wow yeah. what an honor so let's see so where we've gotten so far with our chartreuse is we've taken yeah. things a little bit, we've taken things a little more original, things a little yeah. more close to home. Yeah. We've kind of gone out of, we've we've straight up like gone out into like the outfield a little oh, bit yeah. with our chartreuse cocktails. And as of now, like if, if our chartreuse has been like a ball game, yeah. evidently there I haven't I haven't seen like uh, any, any out of bounds yet. Yeah, the the one thing that I'm not sold on is uh, John Ray's Negronatini. And, and, Negronatini, and it's right. only because I think it needs to be a dirty Negronatini. I agree with that. Uh, and I think that like the recipe needs to be halved. Yes. Like instead of it being five ounces of spirit, you definitely don't need that. But I mean, I, I, the picture said coupe glass. Like yeah. it just we're pushing the limits of coupe. I bet you that Rachel Ray sells like enormous like coupe glasses it uh like maybe uh, i can even imagine like walking into the store and seeing like a negroni teeny like yeah. batched cocktail yeah. like with rachel ray's like brand well, name on it that. and be like yeah i'll take that like yeah. i can totally see that yeah uh that's the one where i'm like okay like i get it i understand what you're doing but like i think you missed a thing mm -hmm. So I think as we move a little bit farther into the stream, we're at the two and a half hour yeah. mark right now. So I think depending on how fast we move through like the next one, it's possible we, we could do two more, yeah. maybe just the last one as well. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to offer a little bit of a query to you. All right. So do we want to try to take, do we want to try to modify base spirits yeah do we want to try to go down the path of mixing it with other botanical botanicals we've seen like chartreuse right, and right. maraschino so far but there are other ways to right. play with it or do we want to add a completely other ingredient into the mix and change the type of cocktail that we're making entirely i think we should break like the mold break because the mold. like we've done a lot of like gin plus mm -hmm. and we've done a lot of like sweet plus um all right and as we edge away from like the gins and the vodkas we get into things that i don't like all right and don't drink uh Ooh, i kind of like i like so I, will, going. I will take a sip of whatever like comes next like i can right. guarantee you it has an ingredient that like i am physically repulsed by probably i i have we'll, i have ideas yeah, but we'll, we'll 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 try it out and see like maybe like chartreuse is like a miracle and we'll like elevate we'll it we'll see us. it's possible so i have a perfect idea now okay. of the cocktails prepared there's yeah. one in particular that yeah. i was like it's apparently been on my list for a very yeah. very very long well, then time we have to do it it's a very, it's, it's been a yeah. long time coming. And yeah. it's back when I discovered about fizzes and flips and stuff. When okay. you take an egg and you put it into a yeah. cocktail, you know, and you do stuff with it and it has a kind of nice little frothy head right. to it. Had a little bit of overview of that like a couple streams ago, right. but I did not have the key ingredient to make apparently a drink that is very popular in Australia. Ooh. According to a single post by, um, this was actually in one of my books over here, mm -hmm. uh, the Mezcal and Tequila Cocktails book mm -hmm. by Robert Simonson. Okay. So what we're doing now is a cocktail called the Death Flip, which at least according to Robert is like a modern classic in Australia, combining okay. together your yellow chartreuse yep. coming back again, I like that. some tequila, mm -hmm. Jägermeister, okay. simple oh, syrup, an egg, and some nutmeg up on top. This is taking the, this is completely out of the water. This is a terrible drink to end the night on. Death and I am flip. excited for it. So we'll see what happens. I like, This is like, again. You I race, have, I'm gonna get a thingy. Sounds good, thank you for yeah, that. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna divide and conquer. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, so one of the cool things about going out and like purchasing books to be able to get mm -hmm. recipes from and stuff is like, there is like this, this unknown matrix or this unknown tree of dependencies right. of what cocktail books that you mm -hmm. can even have the hope of making things 
mostly because of the ingredients that you find in there. And a lot of the books will call for, I think the one that's most far out there is one that's inspired by Alice in Wonderland. Okay. And they, they, a lot of that is like infusions that you have to make on your own. Um, but a lot of the really cool drinks that I find from people who are like established bartenders are the ones that call for ingredients that you might not necessarily have readily available. And even if you did have them readily available, you would not necessarily think that you were going to combine those together and make something that is good right. or just a drink in general. So the Death Flip happens to be one of those. It was what the um, the Mezcal and Tequila book uh, is something that I picked up actually over in one of the gift shops over here in Philadelphia, right. oddly enough. And I mostly got it because tequila is a drink, is a spirit that I have experience with a lot of in my like earlier years. Right. It's, my, it's my mother's drink of choice. She loves a nice Patron and cranberry juice, which, you know, it's a smell of my, basically a smell of my childhood, oddly mm -hmm. enough. Um, Mezcal was something I didn't discover until a lot later on because um, I had known for a while that like tequila is like <laughs> excuse me blue whip or agave right. but like there's other types of agaves mm -hmm. out there and I didn't really know like what you do with it so one of the cocktails in the book is evidently this uh, this death flip which I just saw as a flip and was like wow this seems interesting right excuse me for a moment like cough <clears throat> I don't know where that came from in any case, so what we're gonna do is we're going to shake everything together, um, except for the garnish of our little, like, we're gonna grate some nutmeg over top. Ooh, it's, it's good. That's classic. So what I'll do is if we, we can start combining things into our, uh, so my last shaker of the evening, if we go any farther, I'm gonna have to like, uh, actually clean like clean stuff, yeah. You know? Oh, which I, uh, I'm I hoping, I don't wanna have to do more work. Yeah, I'm gonna avoid yeah. that. We'll just go back to our other drinks, exactly. it'll be fine. There we go. So we'll put that in there, I'll put a couple of ice cubes in there as well. I will go into the refrigerator and grab an egg. Okay. We're gonna need one of those. We're also gonna need some tequila, which I'll grab one. All right. I grabbed a couple at the store the other day. One is one called Tortilla, and one is uh, Montezuma, which Montezuma sounds cooler. You should pick the one you're excited about, because again, I, I think tequila is poison. Let's see, one of these, one of these is a, them's 40, oh, they're both 40. One was a little more, I think it was the, Montezuma sounds cool. I'll go with this one. All right. Tequila can be very... I understand the aversion to tequila. I think it was the smell of tequila that yeah. originally was like, to me, does not play well with my senses. And I, for a while, told myself that I was not a tequila person. But right. like, I kind of... I can be a tequila person. You could become a tequila it's person. Like, you know, when you combine a bunch of things together, you never exactly know what it is you do or do not vibe with. Especially when you're taking some ingredients combining them together and completely transforming whatever it is that you're, uh, that you're making. So I grabbed a little bit of simple syrup and then nice. add a little egg as yeah. well and we're, we're gonna go wild on this thing. All right. So first we'll add a full ounce of our Blanco tequila. This okay. one is Montezuma. I bought it mm. yesterday. It tastes like tequila. If it's only an ounce. Mm -hmm. We'll put it in the small side. Mm. There we go. I already smell it just from having opened it. It is a. I think of the two that I bought, the Montezuma and the tortilla, this one is the more potent one. I think I could be wrong about that. There so, we go. Nice. So we have our full ounce in there so far, about 30 milliliters. We're gonna add a half an ounce, or about 15 milliliters, of our yellow chartreuse. I feel like we've been actually. Uh, moving a little more toward the yellow chartreuse as our ingredients, which I feel like, right? you know what, I'll take that. Because I feel like most most ones that I've seen call for the green chartreuse. Uh, I mean, we'll see how we're doing at the end of the night. Oh, mm -hmm. That's a little heavy, but you I'll know, take I'll, it. I'll just drink the rest. I'll take the sip of the rest of it, absolutely. Corrupted just passed, uh, popped in and says, have I missed anything? Oh dear, you. there has been an entire adventure so far. I am sorry to say you've missed a lot. But there's still a little bit more left. Nice. This time we're actually doing, we're kicking it back to the days of when Imichao was last joining us. And uh, we're doing a, uh, we're doing a flip. We're combining things together with an egg. So there's still more fun to be had. Chartreuse is wow, incredibly versatile. Yeah, who knew? Is, who knew, right? So next we're gonna add a half an ounce of Jägermeister, and our mm -hmm. Jägermeister is. Right down there, there's a little antelope hanging in the back, yeah. hanging behind all of my bitters and stuff in the more botanical section of the, the bar collection. Jaeger to me is very, very licorice-y. And I feel like it's actually gonna go pretty well with the more like uh, anise flavors that we're getting yeah. from the chartreuse. So I'm looking forward to that. 
Yeah. Corrupted says, we were literally just talking about how she'll be on next month. Indeed, Amy Michelle will be making another appearance. I believe it's the end of June. So cool how we're planning things far out in advance. That's the only reason that this could happen this evening. Yeah. Because of some careful planning and um, you know, a good set of reminders from people who are definitely not me. Because I'm very bad at holding myself accountable to my own plans. Luckily, we have people who insist, and it's great. We have boys. We got we got people who are just like, yeah. I'm coming to your house, and I'm going to give you chartreuse, and we're going to drink cocktails together. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, man, okay. Yeah. Oh, fine, then. Also, we'll go have dinner. All right, yeah. That was nice. That was pretty good. That was great. Yesterday was a it was a nice fun adventure. It was a fun fun adventure. We're gonna add just a dash, a dash of simple syrup. Touch. So I'm just gonna get a little, just a Ooh. little dash of simple syrup in there. That is going great. Okay. Disney Queen says, "Wait, there were more than one. There's been many. There's been several. There several so yeah. far. Very good. You can you can hang over there, simple syrup. Next, we need to add uh, an entire egg. Um, it one does not say egg. the yolk." It does not say the white. It just says an egg. If it's a flip, so, it's probably the whole egg. It's probably we the whole egg. We learned that a couple weeks ago. There we go. Kind of trying to do the one-handed trick. Nope, just ain't working. Sometimes I can do the whole one-handed. There we go. Oh, it's okay. We're definitely going to strain this anyways. Oh, yeah. For, like, for sure. Oh, for sure. I need to get one of the other strainers as well. Let me clean that in the meantime. All right. That's, that's all we need for there. So I think now it's time to combine together and just give that thing a shake. And we'll put this into, we'll find, we'll find a glass yeah. for that. I'll get, I'll get a glass for that. We got... Is it just a wet shake at the top? So what we're gonna do is, it says, let's see. This is what it's saying is put it into a shaker filled with ice. So it doesn't seem that we're doing any dry shake here, just a straight up Ooh, wet shake. Like we that. usually, when you use something with like a like um, an egg white, mm -hmm. you want to do the dry shake first, just because you want to try to like, it's the egg white that we're trying to emulsify. Right. Whereas with the yolk, like, we're really not Ooh. trying to do anything with the yolk. That's kind of what Wow, that has got quite a texture to it already, if you see that. We're not, uh, we're not fully done yet, I don't think. Indeed. Now, just, just go wild on it. So long as you feel like the egg yolk has been adequately cracked open, spread all over the place, absolutely no hope of anything being born from it, then I think we'll be okay. We'll just uh, double strain it. Exactly. We're definitely, definitely going to double strain it. It's looking pretty, yeah. Uh, looking pretty, looking pretty good. It's, it's looking pretty eggy. Interesting how like that, yeah, egg yolk will always impart this like, flips are always that like oh, interesting yellow it color. It is like so pancake batter. It very much is. It's great. I love a nice flip, so I've been looking forward to this one for a while. I want that done because it hurts my hands to hold it. There we which go. Means that it's cold. Really done. Disney Queen says, "I thought more than awesome was special." Uh, he is um, confirms Jasper, just yeah. like all bar with the next guests. Excellent shaking job there, my dude. Yeah, I've been shaking nice. all day. There we go. For I'm better, for better, man. or for worse. Yeah. <laughs> I had a, I had a very chill. Yeah. Relatively speaking, I had a very chillax day, and I was very happy with that. Just had to run to the office for a little bit. So let's bring the angle over. And All so right. what I'm going to do in the meantime is I'm going to go out and grab over a oh, some nutmeg. I'm going to grab myself a little thing of that. I'm going to ask you for the grater uh, and one of the mesh strainers over there. And then we'll kind of a uh, very wobbly cocktail angle. Hello there. Hello you. How's that looking? Yeah, don't break. Please don't break. That would be so good if you didn't. I gotta rebuild that. There we go. You get it? <laughs> it's so difficult to maneuver. There we go. Thank you for that. We'll use that for our garnish. And now we will double strain into uh, a glass like this. You could some call it coop, some otherwise. It doesn't really matter, honestly. There's not a lot of liquid in here. Wow. That is the eggiest drink. What a... Uh, oh my god, what a texture there. The death flip. That. Mm. Wow. And now, we'll grate some nutmeg over top. Really bring it all home. Grab one of my... Gotta get one of my nutmegs out of here. There we go. 
That's the spiky side. Yes, it is. Hmm. Just a little bit of... Ooh. Here we go. Very excellent. That's our... It's our death flip. I don't know why it's a death it, flip specifically. Maybe just because, like, Australia is a very, very deadly yeah. place to go to. I've heard everything there is trying to kill you. Jasper, that looks like a whole, like, legit custard. Like... It is very... It does like, have that custard vibe to it. Like, this is a thick drink. Oh my goodness, yeah. Like, I can already tell you. Oh, yeah. Shall we switch back and get us any uh, We can do that. Yeah, Probably gonna smell yeah. really eggy. It's gotta. It's gonna smell like eggs or tequila. It's gotta be one of the two. Maybe a little or bit both, of both. Yeah. Or may, it'd be, uh, I'd be so shocked if I smell. Oh, I was gonna smell nutmeg, but also yeah. like the chartreuse, maybe. Hello, don't spill. Oh, that's that's tequila. Mm -hmm. That is a very. Uh -oh. Would you like to? Hi. That's very tequila. That's very tequila to me. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's All right. Would you like to try it first? Sure. Go for it. What are you thinking? I saw I saw a little bit of like a mm, there. Oh, that's weird. Uh, I don't like tequila. I'm okay with that, and I think it's because there's an egg in there. Mm-hmm. And like, it sounds disgusting, but it tastes like a tequila custard. I think the chartreuse is just gone. Like, unless that's what's making it taste so desserty. Wow. But it tastes like vanilla custard. It is. But you've poured tequila. So on it. custardy. Yeah. It is like there is enough you need to action happening eggs. there that I'm like. So I am getting the um uh what do you call that thing uh the Jager Jagermeister yeah. there I I'm getting the Jagermeister in there. Um, I'm also getting a little bit of like the like maybe I'm getting it mixed up. But I'm getting the uh, chartreuse as well. Just a, just a tinge. The tequila is like... That tequila flavor is enough to push the narrative that this is like a custard. Yeah. As opposed to like, let's say like something that's not, I guess, a different type of custard. Like, I don't like flan. Right, 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 something. right. Like a different type of like kind of like eggy, yeah. milky type beverage. Or a dessert in this case. Um, that's not... That is a lot of, not what I was expecting. Yes, it's- uh, I don't exactly know how, quite how to describe that, but it, I think it gels pretty well. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's all those things coming together to make a new thing, like it's- There, there is something very, very like uh, aloe about this. Yeah. Almost very like, I think the, the agave notes specifically in the tequila are very, very prominent. That That's like, that aftertaste that I'm getting yeah. is very agave. Yeah. The more kind of yeah. astringent notes of tequila are not really there for me at least. Yeah. Instead, what it's been replaced by is the sweetness from the Jägermeister yeah. and the chartreuse, which I think yeah. we used we used the yellow in this we one, did. so it makes sense. It adds a little bit uh, more of the sweetness there. It's weird. It's a dessert drink. It and is. like Like, tequila's there, but only so far as like, when you're playing like Mario, like there's like the booze that mm -hmm. like chase you until you turn and look at them. <laughs> I love it. Uh, it's the, it's it's the booze that's always there and you're yeah. like, you look and you're like, yeah, where yeah. you go? And then it just, uh, <laughs> like, the booze is not here, but I'm I actually am. But, and I'm yeah. following him close but by. I am a tequila drink. Uh, mm -hmm. But like what it's that is, is it's an egg drink. Yeah. Like, this is, I think of the flips that I've had and a lot of, I think a lot of drinks that I've had in the past mm -hmm. that utilize eggs have a sour component to right. it. Right. They add some sort of like lime juice or lemon juice. This is mm -hmm. notably completely without any right. tartness or sourness. So this is like as desserty a flip that I think I'm ever going to wind up getting to it. And to, to me, this is great. It reminds me a lot of like those custody desserts that yeah. I'm a big, big fan of with like that extra note of like, maybe it's a little caramel, maybe it's right. a little molasses. What what else is the chef doing in there? It's a uh, nutmeg. Is, like apparently. drinking a margarita and exactly. like spills a little like, in there. Oops, yeah. I dropped my marg uh, into no. the egg mix, uh. which I feel like would be, uh, be interesting. Yeah. It, it's also interesting too that like this is almost Almost, I could almost see that there could be milk in this. Oh yeah, or cream. However, it's very creamy. There is there is no milk. Yeah, there is no cream in this at all. And if you were to add, I guess these ingredients to milk or cream, it would probably like curdle and get a little oh, yeah, weird sure. stuff. So this feels like it could be like 
another way to get to a drink that right. has been clarified. Okay. Although, that's a little far out of my wheelhouse, so right. I, I might be making a weird comparison yeah. there. No clarified, like, no uh, clarified, yeah. like, like a clarified lime daiquiri or yeah. something. Yeah, I don't for the scientists. Yeah. I don't understand this, like, and I love that. This like, is like, this is one of those drinks that like everything, so like t talking about how we were saying before, like does chartreuse like kind of stand on its own? Is right. it fighting against the other ingredients? Mm -hmm. Does it just blend well with everything? This is a flavor on its own. Mm -hmm. I don't think that they're like, you can, you can piece apart a couple of different pieces here, but this is a, a flavor right. that you can obviously break down into its constituents, but like, that wouldn't be the focus of it. You wouldn't necessarily do that. Right. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Mm. Corrupted says, I don't know whether to say it looks like an egg yolk or a custard. I don't know if that was an older comment. But yeah. I think yeah. It, it, it looks like you would have to like get into this with a spoon. Right. It does, really. And like, it's, instead of like flan having like the darker layer, it's got like a lighter layer yeah. of like the egg up on top. Yeah, it's got it's got an energy uh, all its own, uh, which I think is uh, it's fine. I'm not really? a tequila person, but I'm not immediately like angry at it. I like I like I like when a spirit that I wasn't a big fan of like hits me yeah. in a way that I was like, you know what? Yeah, this is a way to approach that. Maybe people and this should is, drink this. Yeah, and apparently the folks of Australia have that down, especially for the tequila. Karate says it looks like eggnog. I mean, yeah. it's got it's got an egg in it. So oh yeah, now it's gonna yeah. look like nog of the uh, the, the ovarian variety. Mm. Um, it does have big nog energy, it does. Um, especially like the, it's got the, the nog, the, the like the nutmeg on top. You like, got the nog. It's it's tequila and chartreuse and mm. Jaeger. Like. Just just that idea of having like an eggnog, where I feel like eggnogs are traditional, like kind of bourbon or whiskey right. based. This is tequila. Yeah. I don't think like if you pressed me on it, like I could tell you, oh, there's definitely chartreuse or there's definitely Jaeger in it. Like, yeah, I think I think I could tell you there's an egg in it. I couldn't tell you that there was Jaeger in this. Yeah. I probably couldn't tell you there was chartreuse in this. I could maybe say that there was a tequila in this, with right. relative confidence. Yeah. But other than that, I'd be like, why does it taste this way? Yeah, I'd yeah. be a little confused. Yeah, because you can smell the tequila, mm -hmm. but you can't taste it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is weird because like so much of like, taste is smell. Mm -hmm. Like it's definitely more like like in the in the way that tequila is uh, mm -hmm. blue Weber agave. Right. This feels a lot more agave like, but I don't think that I'd be able to make that association between the vegetal agave flavor that I'm right. getting if I were to drink this on its own. I'd be mm -hmm. a little confused. I might even I might even say like this is vodka based. And that what you were putting into it was some like specialty syrup or something that you mixed with like a little bit of like, I don't know, like parsley or cilantro or some other like herbal botanical yeah because it's weird like like the tequila smell is there mm -hmm. but it also like it, it smells like you were like baking with tequila yeah. right like in the, like, like how I, you like bake with wine or yeah. like sake and stuff and it might be like a foot thing where it's like this like my brain is telling me is food mm -hmm. and therefore if it is food I can like this because I mean, as as far as like you know, there are many different ways to like cook an egg, and I mean, technically speaking, maybe there's some sort of chemical reaction yeah. happening yeah. here. It's egg nonetheless. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, again, like number one out the gate, like Jasper's right, like like we are drinking an egg mm -hmm. that has other stuff in it. Like, it's gone well. And I almost wonder, like. We just have bigger eggs. Like, do we right. have our do we have our ratios off? Like, yeah, I don't know. So, this? I mean, even thinking about like when you add egg to a cocktail, like some some cocktails where specifically when they're calling for like egg whites, right. you sometimes they will actually give a ratio, like a, a yeah. measure of how much egg whites to use because you can buy egg whites in a container yeah. and put that into a jigger and measure it out appropriately. Yeah. But when somebody says one egg, you are at the mercy of the chicken at that point right. or whoever laid the yeah. egg. And I guess technically, like, I know there are emus over right. in Australia. So, like, maybe when they say a single egg, maybe it's not supposed to be a chicken egg. Right. I, yeah. want, I wonder how an emu egg would be in this or some other bird. You might need a bigger glass. Probably. Yeah. Or, like, or ostrich eggs yeah. are just absolutely ginormous. Could you imagine? Like, a drink, like, it had to be a batch cocktail. Yeah. Oh, Gotta yeah. Gotta be. Batched egg cocktail. Yeah. What a time. No idea how you would shake and agitate that enough. To, uh, Maybe you just like you happen. drill a hole in the egg itself and you, yeah. you use that as the shaker. Yeah. 
Like, I feel like that would be the case. Are you okay, love? You going to sleep? Yeah. I love you very much. You You're have like a wonderful so night. It's love you. Bye. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Oh. All right. Y'all have fun. Indeed. Yeah. So now I have to ask, how you feeling? Um, how are things going so far? Uh, I am good. Uh, I've learned a lot. Awesome. Congratulations. We, we, thank you. Uh, you should always learn new things. Uh, while we're here, is there anything else that you wanted to play with before, like well, we? Well, let me let me think for a second. Think about it. Because I did prepare. Like, as about, I as think about it while I sip this uh, Alaska. Indeed, as bartender with an X normally does. There are like a number of cocktails that like I just couldn't get to this evening. Of of note, the other ones that we actually there was almost half the cocktails that we didn't wind up getting to, which is which is totally which is fine. great because you save those for like, exactly other for other streams. There there are different themes that wind up putting together I also, think I will point out all I have to mix things in is this a little mixing glass so there uh, could be let's see if any of these are mixing there is one other cocktail that utilizes the mixing glass however this is actually kind of a little this is this is a little more Negroni like okay than the other ones. And it's called Bijou or Bijou Bijou, Bijou and it combines gin the chartreuse the green chartreuse uh, with some sweet vermouth some cherry and mm. orange bitters and stuff, but I think that's a little that's a little like it's compared to like where we have been. Yeah. Like we could end it like we at should, a very. We should talk about point. where we've been. Indeed, yeah. I like that idea. Yeah, I see Rich popping on saying I came in late. Make one more, says Rich. Uh, oh no, we're oh, getting no. A, we got it. We got some. Uh, we got some like people who got to like sleep over yeah. here, you know. But at the very least, I think we'll, we'll go over where we've been so far because yeah. there have been a number of ways to utilize chartreuse so far, and I think we've got a pretty good. Uh, kind of balance between like kind of our greens and our yellows and uh well we'll go through those and see where we've been so far this has been wonderful and this couldn't have happened without brad coming down and yeah, taking the yeah, journey to yeah, share yeah, this with yeah. us also like without the bar with an x like we both contributed exactly in our own ways this is cool Some and now and, contributed more but you know yeah but you know and even now like these these bottles are very very graciously yeah. staying here so there will be so many other opportunities yeah. to figure out like what else to do with church yeah. and i feel like we got at the very least i think we covered a lot of the outliers yeah. along the and way what's great is like we we touched like a lot of drinks and like when we started the night like this bottle was like here it's like, true i remember when you first reached out to me about this you yeah. sent me a pictures of the bottle yeah. and i was like this is the proof i need this man has the chartreuse. Yeah, yeah. What can I do to get and that chartreuse today's here? Newspaper. And I noticed that when he, when he brought these here, the bottle levels were just about that. I think there was yeah. a little less yeah. green chartreuse. Yeah. Uh, but comparatively, I think in, in a single three-hour span, I think we've done an, a bigger number on these bottles I think so. than I think you have in the entire time that you've had the bottle. So they oh, will be would. put to good um, use here. Yeah, which is exciting, right? Like, Absolutely. Because like, I think we learn like like what I learned today, at least, was like, this is uh, Gatorade and yellow. Indeed. And it is better than it has any right to be. Right? Uh, two, so who knew that some, there, there's some two ingredient combination out there that is just like, oh, wild and stuff. But, but alas, before we get to that, yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. stop with, we'll give a cold overview of where we have yeah. been so far. So this was a stream about chartreuse. We've got the green variety. We've got the yellow variety. There are other forms of chartreuse out there. The specialty bottles of various different vintages. You've got your special VEP versions. You've got, I think there's even like a bitters that, I think the bitters was, in, was what inspired the yellow chartreuse, so. which came out after the fact. There's a whole complex mm. history. The this thing, this recipe is from 1605, and apparently, like, it takes a collection of three monks with a vow of silence mm -hmm. to bring these beautiful liqueurs to the table, which people are so in love with, and it just takes so much time away from them that they are like, we gotta limit these things. Right. So, chartreuse green is more bitter than chartreuse yellow. Chartreuse yellow comes in at a slightly lower ABV. I think this is about 40-ish percent. This one's about 50-ish percent. Yep. This one, very, very strong on those notes. Both of them very strong on notes of like licorice or anise. This one, a little more peppercorn, a little more of those spicier notes. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, a little more on kind of the, uh, I'd say a little more citrusy, right. um, but a lot more sweeter, kind of like almost cane sugary which has been very good. Sipping them neat, those are the type of tasting notes yeah. that we were able to find. You can add a little bit of ice to them. In particular, we combined it with a bit of tonic water over here, adding a little bit more bitterness and a little bit of an extra type of sweetness to it. Uh, it tasted nice, 
it was a good comp, a good two ingredient cocktail uh, where you mix your tonic water and your chartreuse, add a little ice to it, and it transforms over time as the ice begins to melt, and it has a cool little evolution on its own that kind of melts it out and keeps it uh, bubbly, a little sparkly, um, and and nice, all things considered. Yeah. I see Rich over here saying, I recently made a chartreuse gimlet that was quite nice. That combo of like, let's say like a lime juice yeah. uh, actually popped up when we made a last, last word, word over here, yeah. which combines in equal parts, some green chartreuse, some uh, maraschino liqueur, lime juice, and I'm missing something else there for some reason. Uh, gin, chartreuse. So gin, yeah, some gin yeah. as well. Specifically in this case, I think it was food and wine recommended specifically a tankery gin. Mm -hmm. And it was lovely. It is a classic like prohibition era cocktail that is so prolific. It has created so many other variations and riffs that breach the, the mm -hmm. if you could call them cocktail families. Right. Like there's your last word and your mm -hmm. final word and you named a couple other ones as well that they're just, there's so many of them. Interesting to think too that when we tasted it Originally, it had a very powerful, like, like uh, Luxardo Maraschino note to it, and like as it kind of uh, sat here a little bit and kind of got the air mixed into it, a little bit of the more uh, Maraschino cherry juice kind of dipped into it. It became a little more like a little more savory, yeah. almost like something that you were kind of almost leftover. With. Yeah, it's like, very bready. Like it's been around for a bit, like which it has. But mm -hmm. like, I've never noticed a cocktail to change like so much to like. This is like a, like a cherry scone. Yeah, like, yeah. It's a little weird. more cakey now as yeah. it's set around for a little while, which depending yeah. on how fast you would drink your own last words, or I guess how large your last words right. are, maybe your last words more like a last paragraph or last right. essay, right. Uh, depending on your, your mm -hmm. consumption level of volume and otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, but so after the uh, last word, we moved on to a cocktail called the Alaska, mm -hmm. which combines some gin and some yellow chartreuse with a little bit, a little dash of orange bitters. And that sort of, that was kind of a cocktail that was enlightening to me because I feel like anytime that I'm trying to compare gins together, mm -hmm. I'll usually just default to a Negroni. A Negroni does not very overtly display the characteristics mm. of the gin that goes into it. You can swap some out and it's more or less still the same drink. The Alaska, on the other hand, is I think mm. uh, a three to one ratio yeah. of your gin to your yellow chartreuse. Mm. And the yellow chartreuse does a really great mm. job of just like amplifying the more botanical notes to the Alaska. We made this one with the botanist gin, um, but also mm. just like it's so gin forward that you can appreciate it um, without necessarily needing to crack open a bottle of gin and just drink it straight from the bottle or from a yeah. little ice glass. Yeah. When, when we're talking about like making a gimlet like like with chartreuse, it's like, ah, uh, like I could just take this home and like get a basil plant right. and make like right. a basil gimlet like with chartreuse. Because I think oh, anything right. you put like in the yellow like is going to amplify, it, it be amplified by it, right? Yeah. Like you could take all of those 130 plants and throw them in there. All of those like, different It's going to lift and it up. And like, that's been like a common theme too. It seems that chartreuse like... I feel like there hasn't been a cocktail specifically that the chartreuse is the flavor that comes out the other side yeah. and it is the star front runner of the drink itself. Yeah. Oftentimes it plays as a support character or there is some aspect of the other ingredient that you add to it mm -hmm. that amplifies the chartreuse, mm -hmm. but it's it's kind of like it's kind of like like a like a like a couple kind of that kind of like right. does well together. They yeah. they, they complement each other and they amplify each other, um, but still both are still appreciable in their own rights. And so after moving away from tasting our chartreuse neat and having some of our more classic cocktails, we started to get a little bit weird. Mm -hmm. We were kind of talking a little bit about like how uh, the you know different families of drinks like your Negronis mm -hmm. or your Manhattans, your Old Pals or otherwise kind of kind of have their own sections right. of the cocktail family tree. The family tree that we're going to draw up here one day. One day. It'll be a whole educational experience. Yeah. You're absolutely going to love it and I'm going to feel like the professor in that case. Mm. But so apparently on the Rachel Ray show, John Ray came up with this Negroni and Martini combination that he called, aptly, the Negronatini, despite the fact that it really isn't like that yeah. perfect combination of the Negroni ingredients and Martini ingredients that you may think. Mm -hmm. There's no vermouth in this. Instead, it's just a five ounce combo of two ounces of gin, two ounces of the green chartreuse, and a single ounce of Luxardo Maraschino. And you put some olives in it just as a garnish. It's just a passing thought. However, we found mm -hmm. that on its own with the with the regular recipe, it does not specifically call for any olive juice or brine. 
it's incomplete without it. Right. After the fact, we were kind of like, there was something missing when I took a first taste of the Negroni Teeny, and I was like, there's something off about this that I don't quite like, but it, I do like it at the same time. Mm-hmm. And as we, we, there was so much to the glass that I couldn't fit it on one container, so we just kind of placed it into another container, which compared to the size of the olives that we put into it, there was more mm-hmm. olive juice right. in the smaller glass than there was in the bigger one. We had a realization. Yeah. It's that briny, salty component that you add in addition to your chartreuse gin and maraschino that was missing if you don't add a little bit of briny and mm-hmm. So if you take your Negronitini with your two ounces of gin, two ounces of green vermouth, one ounce of, well, green chartreuse, and then one ounce of Luxardo and add just like, mm. I don't know, maybe like a yeah. quarter or half an ounce yeah. of like olive brine. Yeah. It feels like a completely different cocktail. Yeah. And it's super tasty. I also want to point out, uh, Unlike every other drink we've had, John Ray says your cocktail needs to have five ounces of spirit. Yeah. Uh, like, e- evidently, like, they either have, like, really large, like, coupe glasses yeah. over there or <laughs> drinking it straight from the shaker. Yeah. I don't judge. That's great. Yeah. Uh, but, like, was really surprising that, like, the thing that, like, this kind of bougie, like, like spirit needs is... Just like pour like some like pickling juice like exactly. in there, which makes sense because like if you think about picklebacks and yeah. um, other things we talked about, like we know that sour and salty like they make everything together. better. Yeah, um, and it's interesting to think that again the chartreuse seems to like it. It fits well in that scenario. It is so far like as of that particular drink, which I think that was drink number three. Yeah. it was versatile. We we took it into a little outfield and we were like, can you can you play nicely? And it did, yeah, yeah, which was cool. So then we kind of went and took it a little bit farther, and we took some. Uh, we took a cocktail from a ooh, a new book called Saved by the Bellini, where it's kind of these cocktails that use utilize ingredients or motifs of around the you know the '90s period of time. We're talking like electric colors, and evidently the uh, the um, the introduction of um, of. Gatorade into yep, the yep. into the masses. So this the other one called the side snap thirst quencher is basically just you have four and a half ounces of blue Gatorade. Specifically blue. Specifically blue. It yeah. doesn't matter which blue one. That right. is the that the ingredient that we call for. And you combine that with an ounce and a half of your yellow chartreuse. Mm-hmm. And the cocktail that you get at the other end. It's a beautiful, like, neon-type color. Yeah, yeah. Garnish it with a little bit of a citrus. It doesn't matter what kind of citrus peel you use. Just pop that on there. And it's almost like it's like it's like a gummy bear. Yeah. Or like yeah. a gummy worm. It is so... It's got a nice, like, that balancing of the, the now kind of, like, saltier, electrolytic flavors right. of the Gatorade, which was a little blue raspberry on its own, combined with chartreuse, a completely different and very, very pleasant two ingredient libation that you can make with evidently like if you can get your hands on chartreuse shouldn't be that much more difficult to get your hands on some gatorade as well yeah uh we uh we did we did that i was like oh god like that's like party punch right Mm -hmm. like uh very very, like i went to like a ivy league school and i'm like making this with mommy and daddy's money oh my god pour a bottle of this i can imagine like a whole gatorade container of filled with ice and gatorade mix and water and just a bunch of like like three or four bottles of chartreuse that would be insane and i see rich's question about the uh, uh campari and chartreuse combos and i know you were saying that like if you were to make let's say like chartreuse negroni yeah you could probably just take the campari the, the if you're mixing in single ounce mm-hmm. increments between your gin sweet vermouth and campari yeah. you could probably have the campari and add another half ounce, just add the remaining half ounce with either your green or yellow chartreuse i yeah. feel like for my palate mm-hmm. and i feel like i have to try this eventually maybe not now maybe mm-hmm. later i don't know right. i'll take the green chartreuse yeah. and mix that because a negroni is one of my yeah. favorite cocktails it's, i love them very much and it's interesting because like like the chartreuse is not bitter, mm-hmm. but like it hits that part of my brain. So I'm thinking about like where can I bring in like the herbaceousness? Exactly. And like maybe I sub out like Luxardo in a recipe for Campari mm-hmm. uh, and play with that. Uh, and now I'm almost wondering, like for those in the Discord, like I talked about how we were in uh, New York and I had a. Uh, spaghetti, mm-hmm. uh, which was you get a Miller High Life and you drink the neck out of it and then you fill it back up. Oh, with, they took like, all the spaghetti. Yeah. yeah. Like, what if you did that but with like green? Um, right. Because like we've learned that like the tonic like like cleans things up. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I wonder like what is like your Campari focused cocktail that you would 
either sub out half the Campari for mm-hmm. half like green or yellow. And it would probably be yellow. I, don't I think wonder, so, yeah, because I feel like Campari still has like it's a bitter orange, but it's also got that sweetness to it. I feel yeah. like that is well, well complemented, or even possibly yeah. replaced and yeah. subbed out with yeah. the yellow chartreuse. Yeah. So I wonder if you did like a Boulevardier, mm-hmm. like where yeah. you did like your like your whiskey. I feel like that would go even better with yeah. the chartreuse because you have those more like if you did like a rye yeah. whiskey or something yeah. like those more spicy, you know, right. the peppercorn of the chartreuse and the more like spice rye yeah. of the uh, yeah. let's say like a Rittenhouse or something could go actually yeah. quite well there. But you leave everything in there, so you leave that you leave your vermouth. In and then like you get to your um, Campari place Mm -hmm. I'm going to take half the Campari out and it's going to be half of one of these bottles Yeah, like that could be really interesting because like that cheats into the last word territory or the final word territory indeed yeah. I see Rich over there saying, like, it sounds very interesting. You're going to give it a try, which is great. Yeah. And the idea of the high life and the chartreuse yeah. as well. Because, like, that whole, like, spaghetti thing of yeah. Campari and Miller high life, like, I mean, I mean, it's basically encroaching on, it's it's basically French 75's territory. Yeah. I mean, it's the champagne of beers. <laughs> it's so, an Emperor like, Spritz, right? Exactly. Like, yeah. Really, that's all it is. And to think that you take some other botanical spirit yeah. and you just add that on top of it, like, again, whole nother world of, yeah. a whole nother demographic of cocktails because now you got beer in there. It's a completely yeah. different type of spirit. Yeah. And like, we know like a Campari and soda like mm-hmm. works. Like, yeah. So like uh, part Campari, part this and part soda. Mm-hmm would also probably work exactly um, it is kind of a spritz because like instead of having let's say like let's say like carbonated like club soda or something mm-hmm. you've got like the the bubbly and frothy yeah. beer in that case instead which is it's, it's a bit of an yeah. analog yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna noodle on this like for a fair bit because it could be a whole nother like area yeah. of like el- exploration of yeah. liqueurs and stuff with the beer and yeah. lager. i mean like where like this goes like when you talk about like campari and whatever it's like well where would you do like campari with like an absinthe rinse mm-hmm. right and instead of doing a rinse you just do like a quarter ounce yeah and i mean if you're already putting some chartreuse in there if you're going down that territory anyway yeah. like an absinthe rinse does not seem that far out yeah they share some common yeah. like, some common flavors yeah i'm i'm interested in this because mm-hmm. like we've done things that had like complementary or we, we wrapped up on things that had very complementary like flavor profiles indeed like, yeah. aggressive ones like this is an aggressive spirit. Um, hmm. yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I like thinking about this. I like the idea of being able to go down those trains of thoughts of like, well, yeah. well, let's sub in one thing and see, like, does this does this train mm-hmm. stop? Like, can we keep right. like bring, taking some passengers off and right. bringing some yeah. more passengers on? And like, do we have something that resembles the original? Cocktail stories, time and time again, will say yes. Evidently, you do. Even though, like, what, like, the destination that you arrived at mm-hmm. is nothing like where you came from. Right. But that's a whole like, gosh, that's like a whole like. If I were more a historian, yeah. that would be something that brings up. But like, we get little inklings yeah. here and there. I would also like enjoy to see like when I'm back home like, mm-hmm. on a Wednesday night, like a stream where we start with one drink. And you change out, you sub out Ooh, one ingredient. Keep subbing out and see where we get. And then you you end that up like excellent idea. in a different station because like that's how like we we talked about like the old pal right mm-hmm. like and you go from the Negroni to the Boulevardier and like then you go to the old pal because yeah. like you're subbing out like sweet for dry or mm-hmm. gin for whiskey. Um, and I see Rich saying also would love to see like a Campari oh, experiment yeah. show. Gosh, I like that idea of like Campari like infusions and mm-hmm. stuff. Is that's a, that's yeah. been in my head. Yeah, because uh, like when I had the high life, I was like, oh, I know you're a Campari person. Yeah, like, for sure. I'm gonna share this for your benefit. Mm-hmm. Um, now it's to all of our benefits. We'll uh, see where that winds up taking us. We had a uh, well, we, had, we didn't have uh, Campari mm-hmm. the first time. We had Aperol. Like, yeah, which actually, is uh, the much other more night, sugary. Yeah, right? the other night, yeah. like I think I had my first. I don't remember what else was in that, but. Yeah. I had like an Aperol based yeah. drink and I was like, this is, this is wonderful. Yeah. This is very sweet. I don't like, have any Aperol, not yet at least. And weird. Like, I think like kind of like the difference between like green and yellow is kind of the difference between like a Campari and an Aperol. Like, yeah. I can understand that. In terms of like where their flavor profile. Similar are. flavors, but one is clearly on the more sweeter end and one's yeah. clearly on the, I like guess instead of on the more bitter end, you yeah. have the more botanical end. Yes. Which has those, like, I guess is a more, I guess instead of being more bitter, mm-hmm. this is more spicy, but more right. like piquant or piquant. Piquant you know? has, has been the word of the weekend indeed like whatever it means like it's a french thing apparently 
But so anyways, continuing our, our summary to the very end, yes. we found ourselves on this final cocktail, which utilized a little bit of uh, chartreuse in it, called the Death Flip. Mm -hmm. uh, from one of my cocktail books that I picked up at one of the local areas over here for Mezcal and Tequila cocktails, the Death Flip is apparently is a modern cocktail that originated or is a favorite of Australia, combining some tequila, some yellow chartreuse, Jägermeister, some simple syrup, and an egg. And you put some uh, mm -hmm. ground nutmeg up on top. It is a flip after all. We yeah. put an entire egg into that, and it is very eggnoggy. It is very custard forward. Yeah. It is one of those. It is one of those drinks mm -hmm. that you put chartreuse into it, mm -hmm. and instead of it trying to like fight for attention, mm -hmm. it just it gels well with mm -hmm. everything else. Despite the fact that you have a lot of ingredients in there that don't you don't necessarily think yeah. will play well together. Yeah, it's weird. Like as as we've like been talking about and thinking about it, I was like, ah. I almost want to take this and pour it over like like cubed up bread and right? then bake it to make a oh, bread pudding. Oh yeah, like a casserole or because a pudding or something. Like, like like you can't taste like the negative parts mm. of all of the ingredients. Like what right. you get is a weird harmony. Yeah, um, but it's so desserty that I don't want to drink it out of a glass. Dude, one day when the bar with an X has a kitchen with an X and yeah. we go from the cocktail yeah. bar to the kitchen bar and we're like, well, we just made a bunch of cocktails and now we're just going to take them and we're going to make, um, make, food, it with them, to yeah. make food with yeah. them or something. I uh, I did try one time. I think it was after um, one of the tiki drinks or something. I tried to take mm -hmm. one of the daiquiris and yeah. put it, gelatin into it. Mm -hmm. It didn't work. Yeah. That's definitely not a confection that I would share with anybody. Mm. Um, but I mean, like, I d definitely, like, you know, if you keep refining, right? Maybe it'll get some. We try things. We try um, things, and they work. And like, sometimes yeah. don't. Because there's a great place in DC, like that Jose Andres does. Like we talked yes. about it. Like uh, one side is Bar Mini, and it's an experimental cocktail program mm -hmm. where he's doing like molecular cocktail work. The other Love side is Mini stuff. Bar, like where it's 19 courses of like tiny, perfect food. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's like a great like testament to like cocktails can bridge into like the culinary arts. Yeah. Uh, and I never really got that until like we had this. I was like, I don't like anything that's in this. But together, but it's at the very least approachable. I would like if you like put it in bread and baked it and like in mm -hmm. a little cute ramekin and gave me like pastry cream with it. I'd be like, all right, like I'm oh, sold. for sure. I'm here. Which is cool that you you know you wind up finding yourself in completely different mm -hmm. territories. You you don't necessarily know that you're going to get to that point, right. but somehow. Ta da! This, you're there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is fun. I see corrupted with one last comment said it is truly the bridge between art and science. Yes. Much like baking and candy making, and some of these were kind of encroaching in the candy territory. Yeah. Like for realsies though. Yeah. Uh, I uh, am not a patient baker because like baking is so much a science. Yes. Uh, I want to live with my like heart and not my head when I'm like doing food stuff, which is mm -hmm. why I like to go out to eat because no, like, fair, yeah. there are people who use their heads for this. Um, I feel like mixology like ends up being a lot of like heart because like a, a perfect Negroni is like one to one to one, mm -hmm. but like everybody knows it's like, well, like when I make them at home, like I like to like, Splash a little, a little extra for everything yeah. in there. Exactly. Like I do a little bit lighter pour on the gin. Mm -hmm. um, and like it's similar to baking too. Like I feel like all the people in my life who I would consider to be bakers, right? They're not the kind of people. Like I'm sure they maybe they looked at a recipe book once, yeah. but like now they're mm -hmm. like it's those special. They're like mm -hmm. my grandmother's recipe or like my father's like famous like grilled cheese right. recipe or something. We're like. Is there a recipe? No. Mm. It's just kind of like it's a loose set of rules yeah. that are more kind of determined by like the emotion and feeling and like ad hocness of the right. dish and just like straight up experience mm. in the past that yeah. gets you there. It's also the, like the story you tell, right? Yeah. Like kind of going love back to see to a like, nice up and uh, new narrative, like sh like chartreuse, right? Like uh, I think a lot of its appeal mm -hmm. is the story and oh, the like cachet. The monks. Like, exactly. There's these monks, they fly on their private jets to go collect like herbs and then it's like, oh, well, we can't do this anymore because like it's irresponsible. You're responsible um, for the folks who are taking the vow of silence. And now and we're all panicking, but like I assume somewhere like someone can figure out like not the magic, but mm -hmm. like the raw base of like why we like these things. And yeah. like we can And we that kinda of, that encourages in like this like the scientific territory yeah. of like like what why do we like what we like? Is it yeah. more up here? Is it yeah. more in here? Is it more like down here? Or is yeah. it more of a combination of everything? Yeah. That's I, sort of like 
the theoretical concept yeah. is very, very cool. But then he goes back to like, well, like the best grilled cheese I ever had, like was like one that like was made to me like one day I didn't feel great, and mm-hmm. like my grandparents came down with this grilled cheese, like with the corners cut the way I liked. And now it like uh, sits in a particular part yeah. of your brain that like you know when there's a time where it just it lights up and you're yeah. like there is there's a feeling associated yeah. with that. It's cool. Yeah. A lot of heart in cocktails and baking and pretty much everything in our lives. As it should be. Obviously. Cool. That's pretty much all we got. Yeah. This short tree stream has been absolutely wonderful. And as we make our way over to the ending screen over here, and we'll get a little, I say we'll get a little closer together. But uh-huh. I, got a little, I realized last time that I can just, I can just do this. Oh, look at this. There we go. Oh, there so we now go. it doesn't have to be yeah. so weird yeah. anymore. Yeah. yeah. But this is fun. Yeah. Brad, I really appreciate you Thank coming you. out here as Please. well. This is wonderful. And the fact that we were able to like, just, th- this is, this is awesome. Yeah. And I will say like, even from a personal standpoint, like there is, a huge honor to think that like somebody like out there in the world would want to like come on down and be a guest okay. over here specifically just because of like what i've been producing right. and curating over here it's great and i will say on the other side of that like this wouldn't have happened here mm-hmm. if not for your own contributions to it too and this is something completely different yeah. i'm really excited and i really appreciate yeah that. i appreciate you like inviting me into the bar uh i just want to know he vetted me very thoroughly before I was allowed. Uh, but yeah, like this has been fun. Absolutely. Um, Cameron's giving me a private tour of the area around the uh, bar. Philadelphia, the Philadelphia, like my apartment yeah. alone in Philadelphia itself has plenty yeah. of character, yeah. obviously. Yeah, uh, this has been fun. I'm looking forward to coming back for like an anniversary oh, uh, this will stream be fun. next year. Oh, absolutely. When you've gotta... learned what to do with these bottles. And, right, and yeah. maybe maybe at that point we'll have like the special vintages. Ooh. Yes. I don't know. Who knows what next year will look yeah. like or the years after. Yeah, we'll work hard to make sure we've got one little bottle of like VEP to like or maybe on. and yeah. that'll be the sole focus of the episode yep. is like how do we cherish this one bottle that we have and then drop it exactly yeah. and break it all over yeah, the place. There you go. Brad cool. it has been an uh, absolute pleasure thanks, buddy. thank you so much yeah. and to everybody else out there no matter where you are thank you so much for joining us if the moon is shining where you are may you have a wonderful rest of your night if the sun is shining and you're starting your day off with like chartreuse and coffee let us know how it is. I'm very, very curious about that. No matter where you are, dawn, dusk, or twilight, may you all have a wonderful rest of your time. And we'll see you next time at the Bar with the Next, next Wednesday, as things should be. All right, y'all. Party on. See ya. Bye. Bye.